So today I want to make intro to Strapi. In Strapi, it's a CMS system, headless CMS system, uh, that 100% JavaScript and it's very flexible and it's very convenient to develop API using Strapi. And we gonna to use Strapi uh, and step by step we switch our application from the front end side to full stack. Yeah. You can look through this landing page, yeah, uh, and uh, you can see uh, this uh, great presentation, how does it work. And you can make an API using just visual part, uh, you can add uh, data types that you need for your entities. And then you can use anything that you want. Like example, you can use, uh, okay, I see some troubles here. You can use REST or GraphQL, it's um, your choice, yeah. You can uh, use whatever you want to use. Okay, so it's a very convenient way to develop full stack application. Uh, and what do we need to do before we move forward? We need to make small refactoring of the file system. Right now we have this application, Courses Box is just front-end application that we need to move uh, to some directory that we can call example uh, front-end. Yes. Okay, so I want to move everything uh, from our directory to the front-end except this GitHub uh, workflow directory. So let's move it to the front-end. Okay, here we go. Right now we just move everything from the uh, courses box to the front end. Yeah, and you can see this changes of file system. Let's create new branch, git checkout branch refactoring. Okay, so and right now I just wanted to commit these changes. Okay, we just move front end to the directory, yeah. And right now you can see how it looks. Yeah, we have this GitHub uh, workflows and this front-end part. But that's just a uh, possible trouble because right now we gonna to run our CI CD that uh, just uh, check our application, yeah, or uh, make chromatic deploy. And we are gonna to do it on the root directory. We need to change directory. We just need to add default parameters for our run yeah and okay so probably like this yes looks like this yeah we just change our default directory to uh front end yeah uh front uh end yeah <laughs> something like this because this workflow uh is fully prepared for the check uh, of our front end side, yeah. So when we need to add absolutely the same uh, parameters to the chromatic deployment, yeah. So it looks like valid refactoring, yeah. We just change working directory to the front end for both of these uh, operations, yeah, for both of these jobs. So let's commit it. And one more thing, yeah, we have our readme and license and probably a readme and license, it should be common stuff, yeah, not, it's not about just uh, front end or back end, yeah, it's just common stuff for both of this uh, part of our application. So then let's compare and make pull request, so it's just refactoring. Let's call it intro and refactoring, then just create pull request. And of course, we have some troubles. Yeah, first of all, let's check uh, Versal. Yeah, and in the Versal, you can see that we have no any real deploy now. Yeah, it's kind of broken deploy. Yeah, so how can we fix this? You can go to the project. Yeah, in our case, it's courses box then go to the settings and then you can uh, set up root directory yeah in our case it should be front end yeah so let's save our root directory it 
this path shouldn't be relative and right now I save this directory front end. So let's check uh, right now, check our latest build and probably we can redeploy. Yeah, so let's uh, redeploy. And you can see that we detect that we've been detecting a uh, package JSON. Yeah, okay, it looks like we have, uh, yes, we have good installation process. Okay, let's wait in until our deploy will be done. Okay, and build looks cool. Yeah, we just uh, looks like we <laughs> we have fixed. Yeah, we have fixed version of our deployment, and right now, uh, okay, everything works fine. Okay, uh, we have one more trouble with chromatic deployment. Okay, and for the Chroma UI, of course, we have a working directory too. Yeah, and this working directory should be. Uh, we can set up working directory to the front end, yeah, and uh, probably it can fix our trouble. So you can see this fix, we just install working directory, then uh, let's commit and push these changes. Okay, here we go. Right now, probably we should rerun all of our build, yeah, because uh, build process, yeah, because we have uh, new changes. It's uh, gonna to trigger uh, Versal deployment, chromatic check, and UI testing, and whatever we want, whatever we have in this pipeline. So, and after some time, you can see that everything works fine. Yeah, we have deployment that has been completed, uh, that has completed. Yeah, and we have uh, chromatic deployment and uh, test and lean checks. Yeah, we uh, right now have great step. Uh, that move us forward to the full stack application okay so it was gentle intro yeah you can uh, look to the result in, in the pull request yeah and we have uh, this new structure with front end uh, with this uh, couple of workflows and uh, we're gonna build back end yeah and then we need um, uh, strapi in the backend directory so see you in the next video bye let's need our strapi backend and we need to call npx create strapi up at latest and then uh, we just provide directory name backend choose your installation type okay let's make quick start it's okay for me and you can see the whole path where our Stripe application is going to be created. So when we have this backend, yeah, and you can see that we right now it's going to install our dependencies. So and then it's just going to automatically uh, going to automatically uh, uh, run our Stripe application, and you can see the result now. Yeah, we just need to open this link in the browser and then we continue to uh, install our Strapi. Okay, you need to create admins um, uh, user. So let's uh, make it by the same name as me. Okay. So passport. Okay, let's generate some random password and uh, okay, let's press this. Uh, button okay let's start okay so we just update our uh, user what type of work do we want to do uh, okay like full stack developer finish so you can see the result now yeah we have this da dashboard uh, with strapi yeah and uh, we can uh, proceed uh, to create like example user or create some uh, new content okay let's like example create new user we just need to press create new uh, an entry uh, then username like example was test user yeah and email test at test dot test a password some randomly generated password and confirmed true yeah and it's not blocked okay false so let's save our user okay so and 
we can look to this table and you can see that we have one more user yeah with this uh, email and username okay so by this way you can create um, entry in your uh, application entities also you can uh, create a new collection let's create collection like example courses or let's better call it course yeah in this case uh, we have a API ID singular and API ID plural yeah courses so then let's press continue and we can feel that we uh, want uh, like example for the course we should have uh, header yeah let's call it header uh, short text or long text okay I see it like short text uh, okay, and we need to add another field, uh, like example, rich text. It should be marked down, yeah? And let's call it description. Okay, and let's add one more field. Let's create media field, like example, yeah? Uh, single media, for like example, cover, yeah, for our avatar yeah or uh, some pictures some cover yeah so let's finish and right now have header description and cover yeah looks like uh that's all that we need uh probably we should have uh several more widths and height for the cover yeah but let's leave it as is for this uh point let's save our uh, course entity and after this we have restart of our backend and you can see this course collection now and we can create new entry in the course like example uh, some uh, course one yeah so then we can add some header yeah or header uh, second level of the second level we can preview our markdown we can add some uh, cover yeah let's example select something from the pictures okay so um, plot one asset okay so finish and we can save this entry and then we need to uh, uh, make one more action to publish our entry actually we can um, exclude this step yeah but it's looks good for us when we prepare first for our entry and then for publication we need to publish uh, like separate step and right now we have published uh, some course one let's create some course two so we have one more entry let's just save this entry too and publish two okay so we have two entry on our course and how can we uh, give an access to these entries and we need to generate api token yeah? let's press to the settings api token and create new api token yeah so let's call it def yeah def token and let's give read only or let's give full access full access yeah so let's save this token so we need to copy this token and then we have this great thunder client extension in the vs code yeah and this extension uh, it provides for us possibility to test our api to call our api and work with api as well yeah so let's uh click to the thunder uh, thunder client and we can create collection yeah let's create new collection uh courses uh box okay so and uh, it looks like i have some mistake and now it looks much more better yeah let's create a new request and let's call it rest um, courses or says okay so uh, and what do we need to put uh, to the uh, in, to this field yeah to url and we need to put our url uh localhost uh 1337 api and then uh what do we need to call courses of course 
Okay, courses. Okay. So, and then we can send a request, but we have forbidden error because we have no any house and we need to add house as bearer. Bearer. And in this field uh, bearer, let's put our token. Yeah. And just save our uh, request. Yeah. So let's make query. And right now when we send our query you can see the result yeah and it looks like our content yeah and it's content data with array of our courses uh with attributes that we really expected yeah we have uh data and inside data it's object with structure id and bunch of attributes so looks like it was very big step yeah we initialized our um, cms and then we just created uh, this basic collection with some uh yeah with uh, some access by the house token so looks like we've done for today so for this lesson okay so see you Let's take a look to the backend again. And in the backend directory, we have this package JSON with scripts section. And we have a bunch of scripts and, like example, Strapi develop that we're going to use to uh, develop our application. So let's change directory to the backend and let's run our. Um, our develop script in the Strapi. And you can see that we have admin panel uh, and uh, row to the admin panel uh, and access to the server. Okay, so let's check in the browser how it looks. And you can see uh, our Strapi dashboard and in the content manager, you can see our courses, yeah. And you can see our user, yeah, and we have this basic user uh, test at test.test. It's just a user admin uh, that we should create when we uh, use Strapi. So uh, I want to create new user, but I want to use API for these purposes, not this admin panel, because we are going to register or make login logout uh, from the client side, yeah, from client side. And and for these purposes, we need to use API. So, okay. And as far as I remember, we have this Thunder, Thunder client. And in the collections, we have, for example, registration. And so we have this API aus local register pass. Uh, and uh, with post method, we provide JSON content like this username John Doe, email John at Doe.com, and some random password, whatever. Let's send this request. And you can see the result now. Yeah, it's uh, kind of um, status 200 awk. And uh, we just have this JVT token uh, that we can use to uh, give an access to the API. And this confirmation that we have this John Doe user with this email and so on and so far. Let's check in the Strapi how it looks. Yeah, we need to update our page. And you can see that right now we have this John Doe uh, user. Yeah, that uh, looks uh, good. Yeah, and uh, we can uh, proceed easily from the uh, API side. Yeah, so we have this John Doe user, but uh, how can we log in? Yeah, how can we make login? And we have this login uh, action, and we need to call API house local identifier it's our email john at dot.com and password it should be our password that we previously sent uh, in the registration api let's like example make some mistake and you can see that we have uh, invalid identifier or password yeah so let's drop this um, this sign and you can see that everything works fine we have this authorization so what should we do next? Let's just copy this uh, 
token yeah let's send uh, to the house uh, this request again and you can see that we have this token okay so let's go to the rest uh, courses uh, api and then let's uh, switch to the house yeah and we need to add this token that we have for our user yeah this jbt okay so let's provide this token and then let's send the response and you can see forbidden error yeah we cannot to uh, get an access to this endpoint to the courses how can we fix this and in the browser we have settings and here we have uh, user and permissions plugin okay so by default our user um, uh, when we um, uh, make login uh, just switch uh, their statuses to the authenticated and we can setting up what authenticated user can do in our case we want to uh, give an access to find a course yeah and you can see the road that we uh, can call with this permission API courses okay so and probably probably okay it's it's enough yeah it's enough for this uh, for this stage let's just switch back to our um, API um, Thunder tool and let's send this request to the API courses again and you can see that right now with the same token we have this access to the courses api so it's very cool and we can be very flexible to give an access to some particular actions that our user can do uh, that our user uh, can read yeah or write to the database so you can see um now we can work with login flow yeah with registration flow and with uh data flow after login when we have this jbt token okay so looks like we need to create a uh, login form for our user and then um, make full login flow on the front end side of our next js application so looks like we've done our goals uh we reach our goals yes yeah, so see you thank you before we move forward i want to make small fix we moved our stories uh for our pages to the stories directory and we have no any changes in the configuration right now has settings uh where we should uh looking for our stories and uh, we have uh this pass pages uh, that we need to replace to stories and when we open our storybook you can see that we have pages uh, and uh, home page uh, error 404 page and login page that uh, just empty now we're going to develop our login page uh, during this coding session in the uh, pages we have login uh, page and we have in the stories login stories yeah it's just quite simple stories and dummy page let's start from basic stuff let's uh, create some form just to put some form tag and let's add on submit handler yeah we just can put on submit right over here and put here our handler on submit as far as i remember we already have input component that we can use for our form let's then just put input components with them with some basic props yeah like example in our case we just add label identifier placeholder username uh, or email so and we have one more trouble property on change is missing okay and we can check in the input that we have on change that required props okay we actually have it like non-required let's fix it in the input component let's add one more input uh, password uh, with type password and placeholder password and we have one more useful component and we have button so we can easily use this component button 
type submit and we can um, use it in our form. Let's call this button sign in and we have trouble with prop on click. Okay, we can change our on click property to non required field because button can be just submit and we shouldn't have on click as required field. And at the end, I want to wrap everything by tile component. Let's put tile right over here and wrap our uh, inputs and button by this tile and add header login okay so uh, we can check how it looks now let's open browser and you can see the result now yeah it's our login form yeah but probably we need to change it a little yeah we have two tall uh, inputs and uh, we should probably center everything uh, and uh, probably we need to have one more variation for our tile yeah with centered content uh, yeah because right now it's kind of and it's something that I really expected from the design perspective Let's open our tile component and you can see that we have this props and header just a stream, yeah? But we, we could and we would have uh, possible scenarios where it, when this header is not just a stream, it's some kind of uh, component, yeah? So let's replace this stream to react child and it's much more better. So uh, we need to create one more tile. Let's call it center tile. Let's ex export our props just because I want to have absolutely the same props for the tile and for the center tile. And then let's import um, tile and props from our component centered tile. And let's create wrapper with this bunch of uh, CSS properties, we should provide display flex, justify content center and align items center. Then let's wrap our styled tile, uh, make uh, our styled tile component that just wrapper uh, of our tile. And our uh, center tile, um, it's absolutely the same bunch of props, uh, but we have this pattern when we collect rest of the properties and put it to our wrapper. It makes sense when we want to make um, some kind of extension of our component yeah because uh, as far as I remember styled component just provide class name that we need to apply for our component okay so and right now we just uh, collect this rest of the props and provide it to our wrapper um, we have this style tile and what uh, properties do we need to put to this style tile Let's put display flex, justify content center, align item center, and flex flow column. And we have sort of the same bunch of props for wrapper and for the styled tile. Let's import uh, CSS from Emotion React and then let's create common styles. And then we can use these common styles for our wrapper component and for our styled tile. Uh, so we have this shared styles that we put to the wrapper and to the style tile. Okay, and looks like our component center tile uh, works as we expected. So let's open it in the browser. Okay, so, and we need to open, uh, we have tile. Okay, let's update our page. And we have center tile example, yeah? So let's close this uh, again. Okay. Probably we need to put a little bit less content. You can see that we have uh, tile stories and center tile stories. It's uh, the same title, uh, but with different components, yeah? And we just group this um, so this stories. Uh, and right now I want to make a uh, less comp less content yeah just to be sure that our center works a center tile works as we expected so let's just uh, reduce uh, size of our uh, stream 
Okay, so and let's check in the browser how it looks now. Okay, so you can see that we have real centered tile. Okay, we can make the same story for tile stories. Yeah, we have this uh, large amount of content. Let's make one sentence. Yeah, and just make a basic tile with a small amount of content. Let's check how it looks in the browser. And that's our basic tile and basic tile with small amount of content. Okay, you can see the difference now. Yeah, it's centered version and that's just... Uh, version that uh, fill all of our um, uh, widths yeah so um, for the login of course we need not a tile we need center tile okay let's use center tile and uh, before we're going to use it we need to add in the index file export declaration and right now we can check our login page let's check it in the browser and we have our login form and it looks much more better but it's still some uh, troubles between intervals yeah we need to add vertical intervals and our input still it it's not something that i really expected i want to have uh, inputs with um, height with predictable height and uh, probably we need to refactor it again I found one more interesting trouble in our input when we have feedback everything works fine yeah when we have uh, feedback and label everything looks cool but when we have no any <laughs> feedback our uh, input just grow in uh, high height yeah and what can we do with this and one possible fix probably we don't need this switch we don't need to switch off labels in case when we have no any information yeah and the second step it's probably about a layout of this uh, element and this basic label wrapper it uh, just looks like this we have width and height props but we just put it directly to the label and then we have text component that we wrap by this label yeah text for the label and text for the feedback and of course our input and input wrapper and so on so far so but we have no any variation in case when we uh have this um feedback or label and in case if none yeah so and looks like we need to refactor it little bit uh just make it independent yeah on this uh properties yeah like label and feedback okay so um let's make it in the next video see you how can we fix our input and we have this label component that right over here and this label props so let's move it to the top of our component um, code yeah because it's just actually highest level of our um, hierarchy in jessics so let's then rename it from label to probably wrapper for the wrapper we have this flexbox model Let's replace it to grid template layout because with grid we can make much more flexible. Uh, and <laughs> honestly, it's absolutely the same uh, behavior and the same layout that we can reproduce with Flexbox, but with grid it can be much more easier. And for our case, let's add basic template areas uh, like this. Uh, label input and feedback and then grid template rows one fraction three fraction and one fraction okay and let's move our styles for input wrapper uh, above our styled input okay so and we have this uh, grid template areas and we need to add grid area input for our input wrapper yeah because our input wrapper it's something that we have in the middle between this uh, label and this feedback and we have this unified text component that absolutely the same for the label and for the feedback 
let's use uh, our approach create label like stylet span with grid area label and then uh, wrap our label by uh, styled and make feedback component with grid grid area feedback okay let's add uh, uh, to here our label and instead of this text we need to add feedback yeah so uh we just wrap our feedback by this feedback component and let's rename this props as rest yeah because it's uh for me it's a little bit uh more description yeah what props do we have yeah it's just rest of the props okay and here we go we have our result that's our input component yeah you can see that we have this label and this feedback with icon we have no any feedback but we still have this component in the hierarchy yeah you can see how it looks uh, from the wrapper perspective yeah so and probably we need to have little bit different variation in case when we have feedback and when we have no oh okay and here we go i find found one way to make this uh dynamic switch between label and feedback we just uh, put label visible and feedback uh, visible props probably we need to refactor it let's call it is uh, label visible and is feedback visible yeah it's just boolean uh, of our label and boolean of our feedback then in the wrapper we have different cases yeah we have a uh, case when we have both visible and we return string like this one three and one uh, in case when we have only label visible we return one four and zero and when feedback is just zero four and one and for the case when we have no label and um, feedback visible we just return zero one and zero okay so I have refactored story a little bit. I just drop default arguments and put for the primary input uh, placeholder label and feedback. For the with icon, we have just icon and placeholder and height four. Uh, for the with valid feedback, I just put uh, feedback and uh, placeholder and label. Actually, we can drop in this case label yeah and for the with valid feedback we put placeholder and label okay so and probably we can drop feedback from the first case and it means that we cover all of possible scenarios yeah we have uh label and no feedback we have no feedback and label we have two cases with uh, just one case with feedback and one case uh, more with label and feedback okay so let's check in the browser how it looks okay here we go right now in the primary input we have just a uh, label and here we have placeholder yeah and our input little bit more than uh in the previous version because we just feel uh this area where we have feedback then with icon we have just this um input and that's all and uh, just this placeholder value yeah right over here we have uh feedback yeah and we just feel area where we have uh label yeah and feedback right over here and with valid feedback we have label and feedback yeah you can look that it works fine and i believe that this uh, fix uh can help us uh, with our troubles so then let's create styled input that just wrap our basic input and put it instead our input and uh, with property margin bottom one ram because i want to have uh, some space between our inputs okay and uh, we have this button and probably last but not least we need to add link to registration because user uh, can choose uh, what do i want i want to sign in or sign up for these purposes let's import link component from next link we have component styled link that we need to import to and under sign in button let's add this link with this create account 
but for the style link as far as you remember we just unset all props but i believe that in this case it should be underlying text and in this case we just drop this style as a type props and um, underline and when we have this underline boolean props we just uh, add text decoration underline so it means that we can add right over here underline and it's just underscore uh, make uh, underscore uh, for our text and here we go right now I have this login form with identifier password and sign in yeah so but it's sign in right now it looks um, a little bit not something that we expected yeah so and we have this create account link and uh, probably we um, actually i've been expecting that we have centered uh login and sign in button and create account uh let's fix it and what should we do to fix this behavior we have this center tile and in the center tile we have this uh styles yeah with uh display flag justify content center and so on and so far then when we uh right over here uh for the center tile yeah when we uh make this rest of the props and provide it to the wrapper it includes uh like example class yeah when we wrap this styled tile uh we just provide uh, classes that we need to this style tile and we need to use by the same way uh, the same pattern with rest of the props in the tile component let's put the rest of the props right over here and put it to the section yeah rest of the props and i believe that right now it should work as we expected okay and you can see that it's centered now let's take a look to this pattern again we just uh, uh wrap our tile component right over here by style it means uh that from the ex um, extension of this component styled component just it provides just a class yeah just additional class to this component tile and if you want um uh yeah um, uh, won't make this uh rest notation and put this rest of the props to our section it won't uh, won't be nesting class names yeah we need to make it uh like um separate step we need to make it explicitly yeah so just one sec okay it looks like from the template perspective we've done our uh, login page okay so and see you in the next video bye before we move forward i want to clarify a little bit extension or inheritance mechanism in styled components and you can see this um quite simple example we have this component and this component uh, receive class name prop and we have styled component zero that just wrap this component by styled and that's how inheritance mechanism works in styled components we just create a bunch of styles that we want to apply for this component and it works by this class name property during the uh, style generation we just create a bunch of classes that we apply per uh, particular components uh, that we want to make styled and in this case it's just this component that receives this property class name so and by this scheme we always need this class name property to make extension of styles and let's turn back to our example with style when we collect this rest of the props and put it to the section this uh, rest notation of course includes a uh, class name and we just uh, take this class name prop from this uh, rest of the props and put it to the section and when we wrap our tile by style we uh, provide this class name property to the section okay and i have 
uh, minor changes in a login form. I just, uh, I've added this height property equals six. And I have this test case. It's quite simple. Test case login dot test dot t6 that just gonna to check render. Okay. And right now our login forms a form. It looks like this. Yeah, we have these inputs and these labels and sign in button. Okay, so let's move forward to the next topic and React hook forms. It's very wonderful instrument that can make our life with forms much more easier because React hook form provides for us uh, mechanisms that make uh, validation and uh, very flexible and extendable forms. Uh, right now, it's quite simple to manage by this use form hook from React hook form. Okay, so and on this lesson, we just create a login form with validation and everything that we need. Let's install this React hook form as safe dependency. Okay, and we have this React hook form in dependencies section in package JSON. Let's right now import use form. Okay, we import this use form and let's add a type uh, login data that describe uh, data that we need to make a uh, sign in. We need to identify and password. So then we need to use this hook. Okay, let's replace login data to login form because we just described our form and let's put right over here our use form then to the generic we provide this login form and we first of all going to use this register and how can we use this register we need to add uh, this bunch of props uh, and provide name for this particular uh, property uh, to apply it to form input and we apply this identifier with property required true and mean length fix yeah we just want to make it uh, no less than six symbols and for the password, probably let's apply the same props. Uh, register name, password, required true, and mean length fix. So this register just gonna to create uh, everything that we need to make this input works. And let's uh, use one more property. It's submit. Yeah. So before submit, we need to validate this form. And we have handle submit for these purposes. We need to report on submit to this handle submit high order function. So and right now on submit, it's still our handler that gonna to send our form to the server side like example. And we receive our data and let's just uh, make console.log and uh, we just um, print on the console this data that we want to submit but how can we handle this validation yeah because right now we just register our fields and apply some uh, properties that we want to uh, uh, take to this uh, particular inputs and how can we make this validation yeah and for this purposes we have form state and form state it has property errors and in this property we can take uh, errors from the form and then just uh, like example uh, uh, show for the user any feedback that we want as far as I remember we have feedback component in the input yeah and this feedback component it's quite simple span that uh, install a particular feedback that we want we have valid state and invalid state valid is just green lights invalid it's red lights okay also let's use our styled input and let's put right over here our feedback property and in case when we have errors uh, for the identifier we just uh, show for the user feedback mean length takes 
So uh, probably it's the only uh, requires that we want right now. Uh, okay, so and one more feedback to the password. Okay, by the same way, we need to show a uh, message password, errors password, uh, mean length fix. So let's check how it looks. Okay, and we can see how our validation looks now. Let's just sign in and we have this trouble with forms. Yeah, we just change size of our form and show for the user feedback because of the different layouts uh, for the different variation of this input. Oh, how can we fix this? We can always um, provide for the user feedback, yeah, but make little cheat, yeah, in this case. We just make ternary operator and uh, then we just decide in case when we have error, we show for the user this feedback mean length uh, six. In any other way, we just show for the user no break in space, yeah. So, and I believe that in this case, uh, it should look fine, uh, but we need to increase height a little bit. Let's switch to the default height, like example. Okay, so let's just drop this height and we'll see how it looks now. Okay, and here we go. Right now I have this inputs and you can see a little bit more space, yeah, for the feedback. If we gonna to sign in, you can see instant feedback right over here. Yeah, that mean length equals six. Yeah, so probably we need to increase a little bit this uh, field. By default for the input component, we have height equals seven. So we just switch to the eight. And I believe that right now it should look much more better. Okay, so uh, right now we have this input and we have this mean length equals six. Okay, so it works fine. Let's try to check our validation a little bit more. Let's put some identifier and we have this mean length error message. Okay, but let's uh, make this identifier more than six symbols and you still uh, can see this uh, message mean length equals six. It's because when we open this errors object, you can see identifier and password, it's kind of object. And we have this ref that based on this ref, we read information from this uh, inputs and then just decide do we have some errors or not. But in case when we have functional component, we cannot to provide any error, any ref to our styled input yeah because this uh, button shouldn't works for uh, the functional components this rest of the props uh, shouldn't uh, provide any ref so how can we fix it a special uh, pattern forward ref for the react component and we can use it for this input we need to wrap everything by this forward ref and we have first parameter as the function that should return our j6. We don't need this uh, notation anymore. We just point to the forward ref and then just make destructurization right over here. And as the second parameter, we have ref property. Okay, right now we have error that component definition is missing display name. Let's just add display name input. It's okay. And last but not least, we need to provide this ref to the input. Okay, let's push our ref. Uh, and right now we have small trouble uh, with forward ref. Okay, we need to import special type forward uh, ref. Forward the ref. And then we need to make uh, type assertion uh, to make this ref as forwarded ref uh, HTML input element. Let's check how our validation works. Yeah, let's uh, take a look to the storybook and let's put one symbol and then press sign in. And we have this mean length equals six. Yeah, when we drop everything, we have error that we have type required and we can handle by different errors different error messages 
So let's continue to work with validation on the next video. So see you. Thank you. We have error and we have error message that we can install in a React hook form. Uh, based on this errors identifier, uh, we just detect that we have particular error in identifier. And then we can use errors dot identifier. Uh, of course, we need to wrap it in uh, corroded brackets, identifier, and then message. Yeah, but of course, uh, identifier uh, can be undefined. And in this case, we should check do we have this message or not. Okay, and we need to install this uh, a possible error message. We can replace this required true by a particular message that we want to output uh, to the user side. And like example, something quite simple like this required field. But what should we do when we have this mean length error? We can use second way to install error message. It should be an object and first it should be well better. And then uh, second, it should be message. Yeah, it should be something like uh, like this. Yeah, we have this mean length value six and message in case of error mean length six. So looks like we have absolutely the same logic for the password. We just install this required field and mean length value. And then we need to install to the feedback our message in case when we have it, yeah? So let's check how it looks in the browser now. And here we go. Right now, when we try to sign in, we have this required field error message. When we put, like example, two uh, symbols, we have this mean length six, yeah? And you can see how it looks from the errors object. It's just an identifier with message and ref and type and password with message, ref and type, yeah? When we type some password uh, before we reach six, we always have this error about lengths in case when we top six symbol in identifier and password we have no this error message okay we can uh, use this sign in button make some uh you know security uh we security check we need to add uh value six uh, or eight uh yeah to the password let's make eight as um, small as possible password for our uh login yeah okay so um right now we need to move to the test cases because we right now have our login form we have client validation but we have no any test cases at all we have this render check okay let's add client validation check let's render first of all our login component then I want to find sign in button on the page. Of course, we need to import this screen from test utils. And right now I want to find button uh, by name sign in. Yeah. And as far as I remember, we have this button type submit sign in. Okay. And then we need to fill both of our input identifier and password. So let's import user event. And then we need to find our uh, text box with name identifier. As far as you remember, we have this identifier uh, input. So then we need to use this user event and we have in user event type. Uh, and then we just gonna to provide this text box to the type and the second parameter it's what we want to type in our case we type test okay it's uh, less than we need but we can check both of scenarios yeah we can press sign in button without any text at all and we should have two re required uh, field message uh, and then we just put um, uh, this four symbols to both of 
the input and then check that we have uh, next error message. Let's import act from test utils and then we need to press sign in button. Let's wrap by the act. Um, user event we need to click to the submit button and we need to detect uh, this error messages yeah and we have re two required field okay we need to make a sync awaiting right over here because we want to wait until we re-render our page and then we can find our uh, element by text with uh, required field uh, notification inside. So, and we should have two of um, these nodes in the document. So, and for the next test case, after we just check this first notification about required field, let's like example uh, add some information to the identifier and we need again wrap it to act so for the second step we just put to the identifier uh, in some information like example test when we have some re-renders actually names uh, can change because uh, this identifier right now just going to re-render when we have this trouble with validation to identifier require check. And right now we need to use this name. So uh, we have this identifier uh, required field and we put right uh, to this field uh, string test. Let's check uh, that right now we gonna to have one um, in uh, one message about required field and one message about mean length. So it should be something like this: uh, required field to be in the document and minimum length six to be in the document. Okay, so uh, let's uh, put to the second text box password uh, some test text. Okay, here we go. Right now I have some trouble with uh, this password uh, required field, yeah, because I have no idea why I can't find it, but when I add this raw text box to the styled input, everything works as we expected. Yeah, we need to set up this role separately. Okay, but anyway, it works fine in this case. So I just uh, checked previously that we have required field to be in the document and minimum length six to be in the document. Okay, and right now we put a uh, second string to the password and it means that we should have two messages about minimum lengths, yeah? So we need to find uh, two uh, fields, but it should be one message minimum length six and second message minimum length eight, yeah, because we have uh, uh, six for the identifier and eight for the password. So right now looks like we uh, we've done so far, yeah, and we have uh, this uh, variation of error messages. Let's put uh, valid uh, links for the identifier and for the password too, just to drop these error messages. You can see very convenient helper in uh, the React testing library. When I try to find name uh, identifier required field, uh, then of course I just run, uh, just watch current file this test case, and I have this notification that I have no uh, any text box with name identifier required field. Yeah but i have identifier minimum length six so it's named that uh i have I, I actually wanted to find so and then when i put this name i can uh, put test at test as the identifier and then i need to type second um, parameter it should be minimum length 8 and let's put it as test test uh, 
okay and right now let's check what what do we have we have name identifier minimum length six and name password minimum length eight of course it's, it's not identifier yeah okay let's just uh, replace it to password minimum length eight okay we put uh these strings uh, to the text boxes and right now it should be valid uh inputs how can we detect that we have valid forms and we shouldn't have any feedback at all okay and let's call screen debug and right now have this input and this span with no breaking space yeah, so we probably need to detect this behavior for the empty feedback okay and as far as you remember we have feedback as uh, okay as uh, span yeah it's just simple span and probably we need to add uh, some role to this uh, component and i think that it should be role alert yeah we want to notify user about some feedback let's update snapshot just press u and then we need to detect that we have no any alert uh in the test cases and it should be something like this we just get all by roll alert yeah actually we can make separate uh constant yeah alerts and then set up is it is a get by roll alert and take zero and first alerts and match it with snapshots yes so right now let's check how it looks and it's uh, just something that we really expected yeah it's our alerts uh, with no breaking space okay for the first and for the second feedback okay looks like we've done our validation and we have one test case with full client validation check so see you on the next video bye let's continue to develop our login flow and right now let's take a look to the main page we have this menu and we need to add one more button to add a uh, road to our login page you can see that when we uh, put to the url our login road we can open this page but it's not something that we really expected from the application we need to add button login and change this page little bit let's open layout first of all and we have a long scroll down to our component layout let's make uh, separate file components uh, and then move this styled components to this file okay i just copy and paste our components to this components file in the same directory layout so then i can drop it and import everything that i need from the components and i need to drop redundant import directives so now it looks much more better and let's add to the icons one more icon i want to add icon login with uh, some login icon yeah and export it right over here in this stream so then let's uh, replace this news link to the login link right now we have error about icon button we have property on click that it's kind of required field and we need to mark as a uh, non-required field okay and right now it looks yeah it looks as we expected let's check in the browser and we have this uh okay login page uh okay we have this uh login icon yeah when we click we go to the login page okay right now on this page we can experiment with this uh required field let's right now put something like this and we have this password field then we can click sign in okay looks like we've done our goal with uh login button let's move a little bit more forward we need to add one more small uh fix yeah we have this uh little gap under our page yeah let's detect why this gap happened probably we need to mm, make 
little bit taller our main area yeah and let's fix this style we need to add 84 view heights to this styled main for the content okay let's check how it looks in the browser and for the dark mode you can see um the difference yeah okay let's reload the page uh, we have small scroll, but we have no any gaps uh, below or above our page. Okay, looks like our login page uh, looks cool. Yeah, when we go to the main page, then let's move back to the login. Okay, it looks as we expected. Okay, and I see one more critical trouble. When I switch to the dark mode and then go to the main page, like example, and if we have some error like example 404 we have reset of style yeah we just switch back to the light mode let's make it persistent when we switch to the dark mode it should be uh all the time before until user just switch back to the light let's use for this purposes quite simple scheme we just change toggle dark a little to save our preference to local storage and then in use effect we just read data from the local storage okay for this toggle we just add uh, this string uh, set team uh, theme and is dark and we set up in case when we have is dark false we just uh, if we have is dark true we just put light because we uh, in the next step we just invert our dark property yeah it means that we right over here we have inverse logic yeah if we have is dark we should set up light if we have is dark false uh, we should set up dark because in the next screen we just inverse this logic so and then for the use effect, we first of all read uh, this data from the uh, local storage. Uh, and in case when we have dark, yeah, we just set up true. In any other way, we set up false. And we're going to trigger this string and uh, we detect uh, user preference or this is dark. Uh, flag yeah in case when we have this flag is dark uh, true we just set up true so then we read this information and set up theme to the theme provider so let's check this quite simple logic we just reload the page then go to the main page or to some error page and everything works as persistent dark mode yeah we have no any uh, changes before we uh, just switch it by our own yeah in the browser yeah so we have persistent dark mode so okay and uh, how can we do the full login flow after our uh, we uh, write down our uh, login data and then press sign in button we should change several things in our application first of all we just need to go uh, to some page which just uh, show for the user okay uh, you successfully logged in uh, you can continue working with this application and we need to switch state of this button yeah this button shouldn't be login anymore it should be something like profile so it means that from one action we should change several states in our application and in this case i believe that the best solution is a global store and on the next video we gonna to introduce you redux and um, we just uh, continue to develop our login flow uh with redux because it's the best way to make your application sustainable because in any other cases you need to um, make too many changes in lots of the places or make some global component that just keeps state for your application and it's 
not something that you can easily test or uh, fix from the you know development perspective okay so next video we continue to develop login uh we just create a client server house uh, and that's our goal okay so see you in the next video bye during the development process i found one unpleasant bug when I uh, navigate to some road, you can see flickering. Yeah, I can show you one more time. When I reload the page, you can see white background and then dark. And when I go to some uh, 404 page that's gonna to make reload again, we have this flickering behavior. And I want to fix it. Let's check our global styles and we have no any background or font color by default. Let's add a background color and font color based on uh, CSS variables. Okay, but how can we manage these variables? And probably I think you can ask me one question. Why we haven't used uh, media queries user preference? Because uh, my answer is we have uh, it, it's not enough to detect what user theme uh, there should be because we have our preference that we can switch yeah we can switch our team between dark and light and set up preference in the local store so it means that we need to define from local store and from the user preference and then based on both of these props uh, calculate what real preference for the user uh, should be let's move to the document and let's create one more script yeah it's just some string uh, literal script and you can see how it works first of all we just are going to detect uh, item theme in the local storage and it's our first flag is duck in storage yeah and then it should be second um part yeah we just detect matches based on the preference uh prefers color scheme so and then we just uh, install um, style uh, theme background color or theme color based on this prop is dark in case when we have dark mode we just install dark lights in case of light mode we gonna to install light modes and then we need to add this script Okay, let's push it right over here and we have this script with dangerously set inner HTML and we just put the set initial theme. So, uh, it means that by default we just apply dark on light mode. Let's for the test just comment every, <laughs> everything in this app, yeah? And then let's return just now, yeah? Just to check how it looks uh, in the browser uh, without any uh, JSX code. Okay, so let's reload our page and you can see that it's isomorphic dark. Yeah, we have no any flickering at all. Yeah, let's like example switch uh, in the storage, uh, in the local storage, let's switch to the light mode and then let's reload the page. Okay, you can see that it's fully light without any flickering okay uh, let's like example switch off our functionality i just comment this uh, script and let's move back to the browser okay uh, in the light mode we have not enough experience but with dark let's reload the page okay and you can see that with dark we have this <laughs> white background yeah we have no any switch between uh real background that user prefer for based on his uh settings in local storage it's very useful functionality that just uh prevent any flickering yeah based on default user settings okay and i'm not really like that this part of functionality about teams and user preference we have in the app yeah because we can move it to the layout because you can see that we just 
proxy this data to the layout so we can calculate it in the layout directly i mean we can drop the theme provider and then we can drop this theme and actually everything from the my app uh, then we can drop this props because we don't need it anymore and drop this redundant imports okay and then let's move to the layout and change layout a little bit. Let's drop props and let's add functionality that we need inside the layout. Should be quite simple because we just move functionality from the app to the layout. Oh, I just moved everything to the layout. Yeah, we have this uh, functionality that fully uh, move from the application to the document, uh, to the layout, yeah, level. It includes this theme provider, yeah, we calculate theme based on this isdoc flag and then install it to the theme provider. Let's check how it looks in the browser. Okay, let's reload the page. And uh, like example, let's switch to the light. Okay, and you can see right now some flickering when we uh, have switched between light and dark mode. Let's take a look why we have some behavior. Because right now we have this uh, is dark uh, state and we set it up as true. So it means by default we prefer dark theme. And then we are going to use this use effect and we calculate real user preference. Why do we have this true by default? Because we cannot calculate uh, user preference before we run this code on the client side and we cannot detect what do we have in local storage and what is the real preference from the CSS side. So uh, it means that we should wrap everything by this use effect. But how can we prevent this behavior? How can we make that this uh, set as dark uh, should be uh, installed uh, before rendering? And I know one uh, more effect. It calls use layout effect. And in case when we wrap our uh, code by use layout effect, and then when we just look at the browser, you can see that we have no any flickering at all. Yeah, it works uh, as we expected. Yeah, when we switch to the dark mode, you can see this uh, behavior. It's very isomorphic. It's quite cool. Yeah, we have no any blinking at all. Yeah, it's very cool. But we have one more trouble, and this trouble is because of this use layout effect. Um, we have this mismatch between client and server because we need to run this code on the server side, and on the server side it has no any sense. So uh, it means that we uh, need to, when we just hit, hit, hydrate this code and push to the client side uh, after rendering, we always re-render it on the client side. Yeah, and it's um, actually a redundant re-rendering. Okay, and how can we prevent this error? And I have one uh, interesting fix. Let's create our own custom hook use isomorphic layout effect. Uh, we just detect type. If window is undefined, we're just going to use this use layout effect. Um, it means that we have client side. Yeah? If windows is not undefined, we're going to use layout effect. Uh, in the other case, it means that we on the server side, we're just going to use uh, effect. So let's wrap everything by this use isomorphic layout effect, then reload the page. And actually, it's not a real solution of this trouble, yeah? But we just, uh, we have no any error from the server side when we have uh, server side rendering. Okay, probably uh, it's very good solution for approximately 50% of the users that prefer uh, dark mode. Yeah, in case if user has, uh, if they, <laughs> uh, or uh, of course this particular user prefer light uh, team, we just gonna to rebuild. Uh, page after uh, we just um, get it from the backend side yeah 
So, but it's not a bad statistic and probably one of the possible solution. How can we fix it uh, completely? Instead of local storage, we can use our backend site when, uh, and we just save uh, data about user preference on the backend site. And based on this data, we can build page for the user, uh, use particular preference for the user. Uh, so, but we can do it a little bit more later yeah but this stage but on the on this stage we have some approach that works for us okay and we have one more noisy error it's really annoying me we have error about icon uh, button yeah and we cannot to provide a forward ref to the icon button so it's because of these links and uh, we wrap uh, this icon button to the link component from the Next.js and we need to fix it. So, as far as I remember, we have a forward React pattern in the React um, that can help us to provide references to the functional components. So, uh, let's just make a very quick fix. Yeah, right now we just wrap everything by forward React and we have type mismatch because we have this icon props and inside icon props we already have ref we can make quite a great fix just let's add this omit and we omit ref proper, per, property and then it means that it should work fine okay let's check how it looks in the browser okay let's make page reload okay so uh let's go to the console okay and looks like we have no this error right now yeah and we have very perfect isomorphic uh themization yeah and uh, it's it's very cool yeah i have no any blinking at all it's it's very very uh smooth transformation between pages without any additional uh backgrounds and blinkings okay so looks like we've done it and see you in the next video bye before we move forward to the next topic, I just want to fix previous uh, code that we've done. And we have this new logic. First of all, we just take information from the local storage about team. Then we are going to detect, do we have uh, this uh, item in the local storage or not? In case when we have no this item, we have null and we detect this parameter. So then we compare a uh, theme in case when we have this key in the local storage and we have uh, none, we just trying to match media with duck. And in the previous version, it wasn't this uh, round brackets. Yeah. And it means that we uh, need to edit to fix previous bug. So then we uh, can uh, calculate uh, colors that we need and install it to the style property. Uh, and we have one more fix in layout. Right now uh, we have the same logic. We just detect a uh, team in the local storage and then uh, trying to check is it in local storage or not. And uh, then we uh, calculate uh, depending on this parameter, what current user preference is. So uh, also we have a layout test because I believe the test cases, it's very important stuff. We just render our layout, then we uh, find team toggler and by default we have a uh, light uh, theme and it means that we should switch to moon. So then we click to the team toggler and the tag that we right now have dark. And one more fix right over here, we have inverse logic yeah, for the icon button because we should uh, show for the user moon uh, in case when we have light mode just to toggle it back to dark. Okay, let's check it one more time and uh, I just uh, drop 
information from the local storage about theme then let's reload our page and you can see doc because i have doc preference by default then we switch to the light and you can see that right now we have light without any uh kind of uh, flickering blinking yeah it's just full dark or full light mode very isomorphic dark or light so cool uh let's move forward to the next topic let's create registration form template and we have this basic type with username email and password then we have registration it's just next page and let's uh make registration by the same way as login yeah i wanted to use react hook form and based on the functionality of react hook form we are gonna to develop our registration let's import use form from react hooks form then let's call our use form and we're gonna to um, implement register on our registration and handle submit and errors as well let's create on submit function that gonna to handle submit for our form by the same way as for the login let's add our form and we have this on submit but before we make our submit we just wrap it uh by this handle submit high order function then gonna to handle validation and stuff let's import component center tile yeah and then we uh put center tile in the form okay so next let's import uh, input and feedback and let's add to the input um, a margin bottom yeah but we need to import uh, styled as well import styled so and as far as i remember we have styled input in the login yeah it's just uh, uh, input with margin bottom one ram let's put our first input uh, with label username let's set placeholder username and then let's use register for our username and then let's add options that we need i think that it should be required field uh, for the username then let's add min length probably uh six symbols uh, should be okay and we have one more powerful option button that provides for us possibility to validate screen by reg x for the pattern we have value of this pattern like example we want to use uh, words and digits and strings and spaces yeah uh, so uh let's add message for this uh, error only letters numbers and spaces okay looks good so we have uh, required uh, mean length six and pattern only letters numbers and spaces okay let's add feedback in case when we have errors in username we just uh, have output as message error message and in case when we have no we just add no breaking space to make uh, this template stable yeah without any content it can be some you know uh, some glitches some you know joking uh, and it won't be good and i see that we have this feedback uh behavior with conditional uh, ternary operator in the login and in the registration let's just encapsulate this logic and create one more component in the feedback okay and our component conditional feedback it's just functional component and receive children so next we uh, based on the children can calculate should we render feedback with children or just uh, this no breaking space so uh, let's calculate it it should be something like this we have this conditional feedback and this children in case when we have this children we just use feedback component in case if none we just return non-breaking space 
So then we just export this conditional feedback right over here. And in the index file, we uh, add this conditional feedback too. Okay, so instead of this feedback, we can use conditional feedback. And then uh, for the feedback, we just put right over here conditional feedback. And then we provide this uh, error message yep okay so right now it looks much more better by the same way i just replaced this uh, feedback in the login okay we have this conditional feedback component right now so we have this uh, username but we need to add email and password let's add two more field so here we go right now I have this uh, email uh, always conditional feedback and with placeholder email and with type email and we register our email as required field with email pattern yeah in case when we uh, just I don't know have some troubles in this pattern we just immediately give feedback for the user and by the same way we have password as type password with uh, min length 8 yeah with conditional feedback uh, with placeholder and so on and so far yeah it's absolutely the same way to build input then let's import button component and style it link yeah we need to add button sign up it should be somewhere here yeah and we need to add a link in case when user just want to log in instead of um, sign up and for the link we need import uh, link from next link yeah okay so looks like our um, registration um, need to be checked yeah because we are right now just prepared this form let's run storybook and of course we need to add story registration it's quite simple story we just import registration from pages registration and then let's run storybook yeah we have uh this functionality that can help us run script okay so let's run our storybook and then let's check how it looks in the browser okay here we go that's our login form and that's our sign up form yeah that can help us create an account okay let's just press sign up and you can see that uh we have client validation yeah it works cool so uh right now uh we have no any troubles with email yeah but passwords still need to be uh more symbols okay so uh let's uh switch to the application okay we have this login form and we can go to the registration okay we can switch between login and uh, sign up yeah it works fine so we have uh, uh probably a uh, full functionality for the login except backend part so um and here we go we have full registration uh, page check it's render check of course and client validation check we just render our registration then uh, going to find our submit button click to the submit and uh, of course we want to find free feedback about required fields then we put some string like test yeah and uh, uh, find our inputs then we're gonna check that we have uh, a bunch of uh, feedback after this uh, action and then we uh, make it again yeah we just make valid uh, email and valid uh, password but invalid username then we're going to detect that we uh, have one feedback from the username then we install valid username and after this action we have no any feedback at all yeah we just have three empty alerts and we can check that this is real expected behavior yeah so and i see that our first snapshot is not okay we still have only letters numbers and spaces 
That's because when we type, we just continue to put some values to our input and we need to previously clear our input. And just after that, we uh, need to tap whatever we want. So let's just first of all, uh, find our username input, then just clear it and type our username input this test test. Let's then just update snapshot and check how it looks. Okay, and right now we have no any feedback for the three of these cases. Yeah, and uh, looks like our registration client validation works fine. So, looks like we've done it. Okay, thank you. Let's move forward to the next page and it should be user. Yeah, after login or sign up, we're just going to show user information about his probably username or email, whatever. And it will be just very simple page. We uh, just mock some user data on this stage. So then let's import uh, center tile. And let's return our center tile as basic component. Yeah. Uh, we need to add header in this case it's just profile and let's return username and email as headers of sort level then let's import button and let's create logout handler it's just dummy function on this stage so next let's add button with this logout handler and uh, right now we have this username email and logout button and header profile so let's add uh one more story yeah that we call uh user okay and here we go we have this uh user story and uh, let's run our storybook and we will see how it looks now okay and we have this user uh profile yeah user page and you can see how it looks now yeah it's just profile username and email okay so let's check how it looks in the application let's open user okay you can see uh this user page we have this login also have registration and this user road yeah okay so looks like we have everything that we need uh, to make registration and authentication flow. So uh, I believe that for the next lessons we're going to implement our behavior, yeah, integration between client and server side. And for these purposes, we need to have state manager and we just install Redux and Redux toolkit and gonna to make full login uh, and registration flow with uh, real uh, interaction, backend uh, interaction. Okay, so see you on the next block of oh, videos, of course. Let's start from the updates of dependencies and when we run storybook you can see this notification that we can update our storybook just need to run storybook latest upgrade let's run this upgrade and uh, need to install this dependencies you can see what storybook going to update it's uh, add-on accessibility actions essentials interactions links uh, builder and manager webpack 5 react testing library and eslint plugin storybook okay we'll be waiting until everything uh, will be done Okay, we have a bunch of updates in package JSON. Then I just uh, ran uh, npm install. And you can see that right now we have updates in package lock. It means that we have these updates in node models. Let's uh, run storybook, npm run storybook, and we will see the result in the browser.
Okay, and I see that everything works fine. So we have home, login, registration, okay, user. Okay, looks like everything works fine. Yeah, and still we have some interactions. Okay, uh, we have first update. It's whole infrastructure of the storybook. Let's commit first part of our updates. And then let's run one more tool. And we're going to use npm check updates that just check every dependency and provide for us option to update. Let's start from minor and major updates. It shouldn't be something critical without backward compatibility. Let's start from next, Babel core, testing library just done, types node, Babel loader, chromatic, and yes, lint config next and TypeScript. We need to put npx uh, npm check updates then dash u and then next and babel core okay and then when we have full list of minor updates let's press enter and when we change our version in the package json let's call npm install And you can see the result. Okay, let's run lint. Then let's uh, run test. And probably for the first step, it's good enough. Okay, looks like we have no any critical problems in linter. And also we have uh, 22 past, uh, 27 test uh, that has passed. So let's run dev server just to be absolutely sure that everything works fine. Okay, looks like everything works fine. Yeah, we have no any blinks. Yeah, or any. Okay, looks like everything works fine. Yeah, I have can't see any uh, broken uh, pages or components or stuff. And Linter found one issue that we should provide alt attribute uh, to the image component. And let's put right over here header. Probably it uh, should be enough for our alt, uh, for image alt. Okay. Let's run npm check updates one more time. So for the second step, uh, before we move forward, let's make commit minor updates and then uh, fix uh, image alt. So for the next step, let's uh, take a look to the npm check updates result one more time. And we have major updates for the emotion react, yes, lint and prettier. With major, it can be some troubles, uh, but Let's check. Yeah, let's uh, try to update our measure. Okay, and here we go. And one more update of Prettier. Okay, and we can run npm install now. Let's first of all run lint because we have yes lint updates and Prettier. And we have no any yes lint warnings or error. Great. Let's then run tests. And we have one snapshot that has been failed, but that's just because of this alt. Yeah, we just, uh, we've updated this alt. So, and probably we need to run it with update snapshots flag. Okay, one snapshot has been updated. Okay, looks like everything works fine, but let's just run a dev server to be absolutely sure that we have no any uh, critical changes in the browser. Okay, so looks like our application works. Yeah, we have green, uh, we have dark and light mode. Yeah, we have no any, uh, I don't know, unexpected behavior. Okay, so let's move forward. We have major updates. 
Okay, and right now let's run uh, npm check updates one more time. Okay, and what should we do next when we have these critical updates? We need to look to the release notes of uh, testing library, like example, and we'll see what this what real changes is about. Yeah, and uh, we need to check testing library React. Okay. Let's take a look to the browser and you can see uh, the React testing library and we have this uh, changes for version 13, yeah? And you can see that uh, one of the most important change, uh, it was about uh, render hook, yeah? I can show you in this issue because right now um, team of react testing library uh, started to uh, have started to implement this render hook inside the library yeah, instead of uh, react hooks yeah and you can see this changes in just one sec in the readme of react hooks testing library because of react 18 support yeah and uh, Probably we can um, wait in, yeah, we can wait because uh, we have no any real dependency on the render hook on this stage. So we have this render hook in version 13.1.0. And I want to remind you, why do we need this render hook? Because we going to check use ID. And I have good news about this use ID hook. Okay, but on this stage, let's just update testing library React, uh, testing library uh, React hooks. Uh, let's just drop React hooks because we should have um, uh, render hook in this library, testing library React. And let's check what we have for uh, the release of uh, user event and for the user event we have uh, lots of breaking changes but i just looked through this list and i actually can't see anything that should uh, yeah that should bother us because we have no any probably we have no any real changes that depend on this list of breaking changes so let's make an experiment, uh, but first of all, let's just update async library React and React hooks. Or probably let's just update async library React and then just drop React hooks. Okay, npm remove async library React hooks. Oh, and it's a very interesting problem. Uh, testing library React depend on React version 18. Okay, and uh, looks like we need to update React and React DOM and uh, then testing library React. But it can be some troubles with pure dependencies. Let's try to update React and React DOM. And of course, types React. It looks like we uh, go uh, all in. Okay, then, then let's install our dependencies. Okay, here we go. Right now we have testing library React in the root project. It's very strange conflict. Let's roll back our changes. And then let's first of all update react and react dome okay and we have a lots of troubles in <laughs> storybook and uh, okay it's kind of not all of infrastructure right now ready for this great update okay let's check what we have at the end okay we have this just updates and uh, let's take a look to the release note and i i've looked actually through this list and i found only one important uh, uh note that we need to install just uh, as uh, env 
environment JS DOM separately yeah so uh let's try to update just okay we just uh update just then let's install just environment just dom separately so and after installation let's run test cases because i believe that everything should works fine okay and we have uh 50 past test cases looks like we've done our updates of just but we can't update to the react version 18 okay it's not a good not a not not something that i really expected but sometimes it can be by this way because infrastructure uh right now is not ready for this update and probably till the end of this course we um we're gonna to update when storybook and any other tools uh will be ready so thank you Let's take a look at our application one more time. When we have a um, login action, we um, activate user in our system. So it means that we should change uh, behavior and rendering in uh, lots of other places. Like example, when we make login, we should change this button from login to user, yeah, to profile, like example. Or we can add additional buttons uh, right over here for the hand for courses, yeah, when you want to add course in your list, like example, yeah. Uh, or we can influence on this uh, theme button, yeah, we just uh, take user preference from the backend and set up theme that user wants, yeah. This just different aspects of behavior and how can we make something like data storage, yeah, data state that should uh, uh, influence on our rendering. And actually, I have one term that um, that sounds like a data driven uh, UI, yeah, just data define how UI should look. And for these purposes, one of the most popular tool is Redux, yeah, and Redux Toolkit. It's a bunch of tools, uh, uh, just tool set for efficient Redux development. And we're gonna to install Redux Toolkit in our application and then uh, use it for our React up uh, for our Next.js React application because Redux by default it uh, it doesn't know anything about React or your application. It's just a data store uh, that provides for you a possibility to manage state in your application. Then you need to connect this store to your application. And first step, we just install Redux Toolkit, uh, then prepare uh, some service, user service, and then implement uh, the service in our application. So let's install Redux Toolkit as a dependency to our application. Okay, and right now we have Redux Toolkit in package.json okay okay then let's define uh directory services and user slice in user slice let's define type user state it's basic state that uh type user state that describe uh what user structure uh it should be yeah and we have jvt username and email it's basic information that we're going to keep in a store that all of our application uh, can read from any places and let's create initial state variable that just bunch of data yeah it's just a bunch of empty strings uh, it's kind of initial state uh, that we install by default Probably we can uh, make this as non-required field and then uh, we just use initial state as empty object. But it's not 
something good yeah because in this case probably it could be some troubles with uh with state management yeah let's define it as uh, empty string by default and then let's call create slice api it's one of the best api that can make your life with redux uh, much more easier before the redux toolkit it was too verbose because you need to read uh, write too many codes to make something simple in redux world right now we have create slice that reduce potential uh code yeah that you need to write to make something uh works in your application and to make uh, our user slice we need to call create slice uh, provide basic name for our slice it calls user uh, initial state it's just a bunch of empty strings for our um, is in our store and uh, we need to define reducers that we need for this slice but we just going to define our reducers yeah be a little bit more precise actions for our reducers on the next lesson let's move to the store and store its second uh, file that i want to create for today uh, for current lesson yeah and uh, we just import configure store and user slice from service user slice so in this file store we just configure our center uh, one of the center uh, entity in the redux world it calls store yes yeah, you can uh, guess and for the store we just um, define um, our central reducer and this reducer includes everything that we need to uh, create this data storage for our front end let's define const root reducer that uh, just make a point to the key reducer and we can take from the user slice reducer reducer it's what we define in our slice yeah in this field reducers uh, we defined action and, um, and then we can import it in any place and use it so for the next step let's create store creator it's function that return the result of configure store uh, that uh, you know, put root reducer to the place of reducer as parameter of this uh, uh, arguments object uh, configure store so this store creator it uh, would help us for the test cases like example when we need to create a full example of a store and then provide it to our uh, provider that define store for all of our application and it uh, will be very helpful when we're gonna to create uh, integration tests and then we just define store uh, for these purposes we need to call this function store creator and then let's define two types we have root state that just uh, use this utility type return type type of store get state uh, this type is just type uh, type for our uh, root uh, state or for our data that we want to keep in this uh, store and up uh, this patch just define uh, store dispatch what kind of actions can we push what type should be for these actions and so on and so far so we have uh, this store definition and we have basic template of this user slice okay so it was just basic intro to infrastructure of uh, redux toolkit yeah from one side we have this uh, configure store from Redux uh, toolkit and from the other side we have this create slice API that we're gonna to use uh, during our next coding session okay to if you want to know more about Redux toolkit it's very great documentation that you can look into it's very cool getting started section and you can look through the tutorial it can help you a lot to uh, aggregate more knowledge to work with Redux toolkit so thank you for <laughs> for your attention okay see you in the next video bye how can we develop our user slice 
And I want to remind you that store is just data. Data that uh, can provide information how our UI should look like. And this is the reason why we uh, can develop it very rapidly because we can create test cases and then just test data that we have in the store. Let's export actions and reducer from user slice and from the other side, I mean user slice test test, let's import reducer and actions. Also, let's export initial state because we need initial state to uh, provide initial uh, state for our reducer. So let's import initial state. And let's then describe this user slice check and a bunch of update state actions. It's just basic uh, bunch of actions that are going to update our state. So how can we develop actions for our user slice? Let's create, like example, update action. And we have two uh, variables, state and action state it's kind of writable draft that we can use to write new uh, data from the action and we have this update action that just receive data uh, jvt username and email from uh, the user side yeah and we need to put it to the state we can use one more useful type it calls payload action and uh, we just gonna to use this payload action type and provide a state that we are gonna to receive its user state but probably we won't receive a full update yeah we probably have partial update like example gbt or just username or just email so we can use utility type partial for this case and uh, then it means that we have payload with partial user state okay we can destruct payload right over here and then we can return a uh, merge state with our payload so let's return our merged state with payload and I believe that it should work as we expected. Yeah, in case when we have no, uh, no any data in payload, we have no any updates because we just return uh, our previous state. In case when we have just only one or two or a uh, full set of fields, we just replace particular field in our state. So it means that we have update action based on the payload data. Okay, for the next uh, check, let's create mock uh, directory and then let's put here user. And we have this basic mock user that absolutely the same as we have from the backend side. Yeah, it's just uh, a pretty mimicry data that's very useful and very convenient for our test cases. So like, right now we can uh, use it in our test case. Let's import our uh, mock data yeah, from mock user. And we have initial state. Let's create updated state that uh, just uh, based on this mock user data, just in line from the inner object user, uh, information about username and email. Okay. Let's check that we're gonna to update uh, our state, yeah? okay how does it works and we expect that our reducer with initial state you can see this autocomplete it's actually based on copilot uh, github copilot yeah and actually i'm absolutely agree with this statement uh reducer initial state uh as uh, initial data then we call actions update with updated state we want to update all our in uh, all of our state yeah based on this initial uh state that just a bunch of empty strings okay so and it should be equals this updated state and let's run this uh 
test case and the watch mode yeah we have this uh, button just watch current file okay so and looks like we have one test case that has passed yeah it means that we uh, update all of our state yeah uh, without any problems for the next test case let's update just only one field let's like example update just only gvt yeah we provide here initial state then collections update and inside our object we push just uh, jvt and it should be equals uh, initial state plus jvt updated state yeah we just replaced this jvt parameter to be more precise it's jwt not jvt yeah my mistake okay okay so and let's create one more action and we have update let's create action clear okay and for the clear action uh we receive uh something like this uh state payload and probably we can just return initial state yeah because <clears throat> clear should reset uh our state and probably that's the way how can we do this let's test this um action Okay, and here we go. Right now we have test case with cascade of updates. We have a first update when we put to the reducer initial state and then we will call this actions update with updated state. It means that we return new state with updated values. So we can easily check that this state with updated values uh, equals updated state and then for the next step we just provide for the reducer not initial state but we provide this state with updated values we can produce new step per every step yeah a new state per every state step and then we can use this new state for the next step yeah it's very very uh useful feature redux works as a snapshot previous version of our state and next the next one yeah so then we can use previous version of our state to the next check and for our for the uh, next check we just provide this state with updated values and we will call this actions clear and it should be equals uh to be honest it should be equals initial state yeah we can use this initial state yeah just to check that everything uh looks like full uh cycle yeah full uh um circle yeah we just uh change some change something and just reset to the initial state again okay but you can ask me, Nick, it's quite simple interactions. Why do we... Sh where? First question, where we should use a sync? I mean, backend communication or side effects uh, or whatever. And um, I can answer you. We gonna to use sync. And on the next video, we just create full uh, login interaction with local storage and with backend communications. So, to, for just for this uh, lesson, we create a fully simple uh, reducer with several uh, actions. Yeah, and we have this test flow. Yeah, we have a very very convenient way to test our slide and for the next lesson we continue to walk in this uh, direction but we gonna to use uh, backend interactions yeah and uh, so see you in the next video let's create a sync actions with uh, create a sync sync it's basic uh, method that can help us to create a synchronous uh, interaction with uh any external inter external api like window or uh with backend services and any other kind of side effects so what data for the login action do we need to have and let's create login data type and we have identifier and password for the login action 
And what should we return for this action? And we should return something like this. It should be user payload uh, that uh, have JVT, uh, JWT, yeah, JSON uh, web token as string and user uh, with username string and email string based on the backend response. Okay. And then let's create login action. Uh, we just call create async sync. As first parameter, let's install user payload. As second, login data. Then let's uh, just install some name, user login, and async action that's going to handle this uh, work. So then let's in the first string just read uh, JavaScript web token uh, from the local storage. Yeah, by default, probably user is already authenticated. And for the next step, we should call backend environment. Yeah, but how can we detect what is URL for our backend? And in the Next.js, we have very convenient way to manage uh, in, in anything from the configuration side. It's n variables. And environment variables with prefix next public uh, can keep any data that we need on the front end side. Then we can read it uh, from our front end code and that's very convenient way to manage uh, some configurations that we need on the front end side. So uh, just one more time, every m variable that uh, has started from next uh, underscore public underscore and then name for our end variable uh, should be exposed on the front end side too. It means that we can read this parameter uh, just API URL uh, from process environment next public strapi API URL. Okay, uh, then we have two scenarios when we have JVT token and when we have no. I want to remind you how it looks uh, for the login action. Yeah, we just uh, should provide this uh, information about user. Let's run our strapi backend. Okay. And then let's send a request to the backend and you can see the response. Yeah, we just sent uh, information and then we have response. And we have one uh, way how can we uh, get information about user. But in this case, we need to provide uh, uh, JWT token. And we can call this API users me with uh, JWT call, um, token. And we receive this data uh, like user information. So uh, when we have JWT, JWT, we should send a request to users uh, slash me. In case when we have no any JWT, we should call us slash local. So, and yeah, one, uh, one more difference. When we call login, we should send this request by POST method. When we call user underscore me, we should call it by GET method. So, first case, when we have JVT, we just call API URL uh, slash user slash me, and then we're gonna to provide parameters. Uh, method GET. And then authorization, it should be header, uh, authorization, bearer, and JWT token. So it's just first case when we send a request in case when we have this JWT token. Second option, when we have no this information, we just send to the house local by method post. Uh, header content type application JSON and in body we just JSON stringify our login data. Okay, right now we have response, uh, yeah, from the user slash me or from ours local.
Then let's uh, wait uh, response JSON data. Again, in case when we have response status less than 200 or uh, response status more or an equal to 300, it means that we should reject uh, this response with data. It means that we have an error. And it means that we have not valid JWT and we need to clear information about user from local storage. So let's create special method, uh, clear user info from local storage that drop information about JWT, username and email. Okay, so we just call this clear uh, user info from local storage right over here. And I want to remind you that we have two options. How can we uh, receive data? In case when we call user slash me, we have this in line response. Yeah, with username, email and stuff. In case when we have login, we have this JVT and then uh, user object that contain username, email and whatever we need so we need to cast this data after we uh, understand that it's not an error let's make something like this we just uh, create a const result and in case when we have jwt we just uh, add jwt and user uh, data yes and in case when we have no uh, JVT, it means that we have structure like this, yeah, and we shouldn't make any uh, manipulation with data, yeah. And we just um, assort it as user payload. It means that we have successful authentication and we can set up uh, information to the local storage, yeah. So we can uh, create this method setup user info to local storage and let's call this method let's right over here yeah and put uh, to this method method result okay and at the end let's return our result okay looks like our uh, login um, yeah it, it, it should works fine but probably we need to add one more protection yeah we need to wrap everything by this block try catch yeah in case when we have some error we just have this error right over here we clear local storage and reject with value uh, this error yeah so right now it looks uh it looks much more better let's create test cases for this login action but before we move to the test cases, we need to add one more very important thing, yeah? We have no any handler in the Redux. And to make these handlers, we have extra reducers section in user slice. So, we can add cases and we can add case login fulfilled. It means that we have successful uh, login action flow. So then we have state. It's state from our user slice and action. From action, we can take payload. Yeah. And then we can write everything that we want from the payload to the state yeah state JVT, jwt from payload username and email okay and little bit more precise to add information about uh, request state and about errors we have special type serialized error from redux toolkit Okay, and we can add this information about serialized error. And also we have different request state that we can describe like this. Pending, fulfilled and rejected. Yeah. Um, so right now we want to handle this fulfilled state and we can uh, write it to our store as requested state property. So uh, now we can add this information 
to the request state as fulfilled and then information about error let's just uh, drop information about error on this stage okay so we have this login action and this handler that add information about login to the store so let's make test cases on the next video because i don't want to make it longer than 10 minutes so see you in the next video we have one case when we fulfilled our login but actually we have two more cases when we pinned in and when we rejected so let's add two more cases to our extra reducer section we need to call add case and then we have this login pending state and of course we need to switch request state to pending and we can drop any possible errors in this case so because we have no any error at this stage and we have one more case when we reject it and in this case we need to add handle for the reject okay but let's check how error looks like for this purpose we need to run uh, strapi and then let's run some request to make our uh, login like example broken and you can see the result invalid identifier or password okay so uh it means that we have payload with structure like this and we need to handle not error from rejected case but this payload too so we can handle our payload as uh object with uh property error inside a serialized error then we take this field error and uh, put it to the state error and we switch requested state to reject it we can make it in first line of this case okay and what should we do next how can we test this extra reducer section by the same way as we've uh, done for the reducer sections uh, section because right now we need just to run an action with particular final state or immediate immediate state and then just test what changes in state of our uh, store uh, we have yeah so and it means that we can easily add new section in user slice test and first and the most easiest uh, test case, we should set uh, the request state to pending when we send the request. Let's add one more uh, slice of test data, login data with identify and password that we need to send to the login action. And you can see that we just take from the mock user email and password. Yeah, we just gonna to use this mock user uh, from mock's user. Yeah, and then we just collect this data to login data. Okay, and we have this uh, login action right over here, and we export this login action. So it means that we can import our login action right over here. Okay and then let's call reducer with initial state and then we need to call uh, actions uh, not actions just login pending yeah and you can see that we need to provide two or three arguments and it's not clear from from the signature perspective what it should be yeah and we have payload action and um, Mm, payload type p and then we have t uh, this t it's kind of type of our action yeah but uh, it's what we should return but from the arguments we have this bunch of list okay it, it's it's really not clear and we need to provide special type uh, it's kind of internal information request id and this request id as far as i understood means nothing and we should provide it as first parameter you can see uh, that this argument zero it's just a string and then login data as the second parameter let's provide request id and then login data 
and we expect that this uh, reducer uh, to be equal and let's check what it should be and we should just uh, switch request state to pending and uh, just uh, drop any errors if we have it so it means that we uh, should check initial state plus request state pending let's uh, run current test uh, in watch mode Okay, and we have four pass test cases. It means that everything works fine. Okay, as the first parameter, it's just request ID. And as far as I understood, it's just uh, internal information to make the syncs works by the right way. Because we need to syn make synchronous um, handling by some uh, request. Yeah, and it's kind of unique ID that we need to have for every request. We can add more information to the state, yeah, uh, just to be sure that we uh, drop any redundant information like error. And right now we just uh, check that we have initial state plus request state pending without any errors because we have uh, dropped this information right over here in line 52. Okay, for the next check, let's uh, add test case that should set the request state to fulfilled and reset any previous errors. Okay, let's call our reducer with this uh, state. Uh, we just spread initial state with error. Then let's add an action fulfilled. And here we have slightly different signature. First one, uh, first parameter, it's user payload. As far as I remember, user payload is structured like this JVT string and then user object with fields username and email. Okay, so and we need to add something like this. Yeah, JVT uh, and we have updated state with JVT username, uh, JWT username and email. Okay, so uh, then we can call reducer with this parameter. Okay, and we need to add second parameter and it's just a request ID again. And for the last parameter, it should be login data. Yeah, it's data that we want to push to our action to make this login action. So then we can uh, close this round brackets for the reducer and we're gonna to expect that this reducer uh, with uh, initial state like this after this action should be equal to and we need to switch our state to the full field yeah okay one sec okay so it should be right over here yeah uh, we should switch uh, request state to full field and updated state it should be something like this jvt username and email because we're just going to handle it by our full field action login yeah and you can see it right over here we just take data from the payload and push it to the state okay and last but not least this uh, check of rejected state and we have this payload error like example and then we just call reducer with initial state and login with signature like this yeah we just provide right over here first parameter as empty error yeah it, it's not payload error then request id uh, login data and payload error that we have right over here and then we're gonna to check that we have initial state with error and with request state rejected and as you can see we have six tests that has passed yeah uh, six tests that has passed okay so and to make the whole check of this login action we need to mimic this uh, backend responses yeah uh, and it means that we need to have some kind of mock of our backend and it's special service that we can add to our project and then we can use it for our test cases yeah and that's the reason um to make the things works we need to check the whole flow yeah 
because it's kind of integration or system tests when we have integration several parts that have influence on the store yeah and it means that in this case if we be if we're going to be absolutely sure uh that this code with all of our side effects works fine we need just to subscribe onto this store uh get any data that we need then we uh, can say that if it works fine we can draw any result from our uh, store okay so see you in the next video bye let's create api mock with a uh, mock service worker and this tool can help us to mock every kind of interactions with the backend side so I want to install and uh, set up everything that we need for the jest. Let's install mock service worker as dev dependency. Okay. Then let's import rest from MSW uh, and it should be uh, one of the most uh, significant um, function that we're going to use in these handlers. Then let's import login data from services user service. It's a kind of type as far as you remember. And we have mock user that we have done a long time ago. Uh, also, let's uh, uh, use a process environment next public Stripe API URL and validation error that can be useful for our uh, mock server. Okay, let's create handlers. We have this scheme, request uh, rest post, and then we put uh, login data as data, data type that we receive from the front end side. Then we just take data from request body and compare data identifier with mock user uh, email and data password with mock user password. We just uh, want to have full match and then we uh, send response with status and with mock user data in any other way we just uh, throw validation error yeah to the front end side so and for the users me we just compare authorization token with uh, uh, mock user JWT token, yeah, and then we send uh, re response uh, with mock user information. In any other way, we just send validation error. So it looks like we have two uh, mocked uh, requests. Okay, so uh, then we need to install it for just, I mean, this mock server. We have method setup server, yeah, and we just import handlers from handlers. Then we just export our server uh, based on setup server call with uh, handlers parameters. Then let's move to the just setup, and we have this uh, much media uh, property that we defined for the window, and let's add a uh, little bit more uh, information about server. And we, uh, before all of our test cases, we just uh, call server listen, yeah, and it means that we're going to listen uh, HTTP interactions from our test cases. Then after each, we have server recent handle. Uh, we just reset state after every uh, test and after all we just close our server just uh, to not not I don't want to have any uh, memory leaks or any other problems with uh, potential risks and we need to close server after each uh, test cases run okay then let's make commits that we install uh, MSW and that we set up just for MSW. Okay, great. Let's create group uh, login async flow. And first of all, let's uh, check success successful login flow. Okay, and in this case, it will be very useful to use this store creator function that gonna to create our store uh, yeah with uh, this configuration yeah from configure store so uh, let's import this store creator okay and then let's create our store 
To call any action, we can use store.dispatch and then login with data for our login identifier and password. And we have two states, uh, state before login, we just call store get state and state after login with the same method store get state. And we can compare what uh, before and what after this login action. Okay, and I believe that before it's just initial state because we just create this store. And after it should be user with updated state and request state fulfilled. Let's uh, run current test case in watch mode. Okay, and after run we have this error uh, reference error. Fetch is not defined. It means that we need to uh, add uh, on the Node.js environment fetch uh, polyfill. And how can we mock just uh, no, node uh, just fetch? And uh, I see one comment in uh, fetch doesn't work on just <clears throat> issue on the GitHub. And you can see uh, right over here just configuration, yeah, and import uh, what wg dash fetch. And this project uh, actually it just it has this notification that the, this project doesn't work under Node.js environment. It means for web browsers only. So, um, to be honest, I tried to use uh, this project uh, with Jest and it works fine. Yeah, I, I don't know what is the real reason. Probably it's some issues. I'm not sure about it. But we have special uh, Node patch. And probably let's try node fetch and uh, add the settings uh, to the just setup. Okay, let's install node fetch. And then let's import node fetch in just.setup.js. Okay, and I uh, found a lot of trouble with node fetch. I cannot use it as polyfill. But right now I have this... Um, polyfill implementation of patch and it works fine for the just probably that's just because we have a browser environment right over here just environment just dom yeah and it works fine without any troubles with this polyfill okay but i have one more problem when i run uh, my test case in watch mode i have something like this it's kind probably back with the latest version of jest and looks like this yeah i have um, um downgraded version just to 27 and now we have uh, watch mode that works fine Okay, so sometimes uh, something like this can happen, okay, and uh, let's move back to our test case, and we have a test case that has passed, yeah, our logic with uh, store get state uh, before login and after login works fine, yeah, our data looks cool. And we have this setup user info to local storage, yeah? And the last step, we need to check that in the local storage, everything saved uh, according with our data from mock user, yeah? And it still works fine. Okay, let's before each test, just run uh, for this group, uh, local storage clear, because we have some changes in local storage per every check. And we just need to restore our local storage to initial state, just empty local storage. Let's then check fail login flow, yeah? And in this case, we just push some wrong password with some login data, yeah, but with wrong password. And we have this validation error when we have invalid identifier or password. Let's probably move it to our user, yeah? Uh, and export our validation error uh, from this mock file and let's import it right over here in handlers yeah so then we can easily import this uh, validation error right over here and what should we have in state 
it should be initial state plus request state and plus our validation error yeah of course we need spread our validation error because it's just an object with this field error yeah okay and right now everything works cool yeah we have uh fail login flow and success login flow but we have one more uh check when we just fetch user me in case when we have a uh, token yeah so let's check this case with authentication token okay and here we go first of all we need to set up a token in the local storage and run store creator then we uh, call uh, a login without any data because we have token and by default as far as i remember we just read data from the local storage and if we have this token we just call user uh, slash me endpoint okay and then we can check our store that this is should be successful login flow with requested state fulfilled and with updated state okay and you can see that we have nine past test cases let's take a look to the result one more time we have this extra reducer section with uh login flow that just manage our login uh state and we have this reducers with update and with clear actions but probably we don't need to manage it by this way everything that we need inside this extra reducer sections with uh, this uh, asynchronous actions and handlers that manage our state so probably we can drop this uh, reducers and actions and then we can drop our uh, update state actions because it's not something that we really need and about login state flow yeah we have so difficult check uh, of our flow but to be honest we have this uh check that uh, clearly uh test every uh step for our login flow uh includes it includes asynchronous and uh, synchronous action that right over here update states and probably it's not something that we really need to make per every action i mean uh this uh check of extra reducer section and probably we can skip this section too yeah we just need to check uh, this async flow and full integration of our asynchronous action with the backend side and with the storage so i believe that we can drop this section too and we have just login async flow uh check that kind of system test that check integration between backend uh, side and between our service on the front end side so looks like we've done our uh, login flow and on the next video we're gonna to continue walk with logout and registration flow okay so see you let's move forward but before we need to make small refactoring we have store creator that uh, just Put to the reducer root reducer and we have no any other options let's make it little bit more smarter because in case when we have a whole uh, set of uh, data in reducer in our store it could be little bit more trouble to test it um, separately in our like, example user slice when we want to check just user uh, state behavior okay so let's create a reducer uh, argument uh, by default let's set up it as use uh, root reducer and right now it's more flexible yeah in case when we run it without any parameters we have just root reducer in case when we provide right over here our reducer we create uh, a bunch of uh, data in store uh, that we really want and in user slice we have this store creator let's name it global store creator and then let's uh, create a root reducer with our user reducer and then our store creator is just a function that call global store creator with our root reducer 
So it means that when we call this store creator, we create instance of store with just user inside our store. We have, we don't need this actions anymore, so we can drop it and we can drop this request ID variable. We don't need it anymore. So let's create in user slice one more async action that we call logout. And logout, it should be quite simple action. It's a uh, async action uh, that just clear user info from local storage. And we keep just side effects inside our uh, async action. And then we need drop information from the store about uh, user. And there we have login flow. And let's create handler for the logout flow. It should be something like this. Yeah, in case when logout fulfilled, we just uh, drop everything to the initial state. Yeah, it's quite simple action. How can we test this action in our user slide.test.ts? And what should we do for the logout flow? First of all, we need to uh, make login action and then just logout. For the login, we need to create store. Then we need to run uh, our login with login data. And uh, uh, we have state after login that we can compare with um, our initial state. Yeah, And our user, uh, it should has uh, updated state. Just one sec. Yes, updated state and request state should be fulfilled and we shouldn't have any uh, errors in this case so great then we need to check that we have uh, data about user in local storage yeah and it's token username and email well the next step we're gonna initialize our logout and first of all we need to import this logout action from user slice and then when we call uh logout we uh, need we're gonna to detect uh that st state after login it's again initial state and data from the local storage is now so Let's make a commit on this stage. It's just refactor store and add logout action. We have login data type and let's create one more type registration data. And this is the type that we're going to use for registration. Let's first of all emulate this kind of data. We need to import registration data in the handlers, in mock handlers. Then we have registration error that looks like this. We need to export this registration error from user and we can import this uh, data in handlers. Okay. And then let's add one more endpoint registration. We have uh, this endpoint aus local register in Strapi and we take data from request body and this data is just registration body. We compare this data with mock user and in case when we have full match, we just return response uh, uh, with mock user data. It means that we emulate registration. In case when we have no any match or when we have not full match, we just return 400 error with registration error. And let's create a sync registration action. We have user payload that we should return and a registration data that we need to send to get information from the backend side and register user on the backend side, of course. Uh, we need to call our local register uh, me by method post and with header, uh, content type, application, JSON. Then we stringify our registration data uh, to the body and uh, just uh, waiting uh, some response in case when we have error, we reject with uh, this error. In case when we have no any errors, we set up user info to local storage and return the result. Of course, everything wrapped by try catch block 
and we in case of some errors in our code just reject with uh, value by this error but let's take a look to the registration and login again we have absolutely the same payload and we need to make absolutely the same changes for the login fulfilled and for the registration fulfilled how can we combine together both of these uh, changes in one um, you know in one function in one handler and we have matcher for this kind of cases when we need to unify some action we can add matcha like this we set up payload that we expected and uh, then we need to test action yeah and in case when we have login or registration and then fulfilled it means that we can run our uh, changes in state in state and then we just uh, set up requested state fulfilled state uh, token payload token and so on and so far it means that it would be successful login or registration handler okay let's just drop from the login uh, flow this handler and then run our test cases to be uh, sure that it works as we expected okay and we have error that builder at case should be uh, called before calling uh, builder at matches okay so let's uh, change uh, position okay here we go right now we have this unified uh, login and registration handler and uh, we have this pending and rejected uh, handlers for the login and i believe that we can make whole login flow by unified way we have absolutely the same handler for the pending and absolutely the same handler for the rejected state okay anyway uh we uh, right now just make this unified uh login and registration flow and this logout flow that works separately by call of logout fulfilled now we don't need this commented code anymore okay okay and we need to import registration action then we need to prepare registration data for the test cases and then let's create a uh, registration state flow yeah and fail registration flow looks like this yeah we just sent some uh, wrong data then we read state and it should be error during the account creation and to be more precise we can uh, import one more error this registration error and then we can spread this registration error yeah just to make it in unified style okay and it should works and we have one more issue yeah with this data now and probably we don't need this data now it's 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 it doesn't mean it means nothing yeah so and then we can easily check uh, our uh, error state with registration error and with uh, requested state rejected and with initial state yeah so then uh, our local storage uh, should be null yeah uh, token username and email uh, it should be uh, this data should be equals uh, null so and for the taxes registration flow we should provide uh data for the user yeah just real registration data that uh, should return for us successful uh registration state and then we should install to the local storage uh token username and email okay looks like we've done it we have this uh log logout flow uh that uh, just drop any data from the storage and we have uh login and registration unified flow by this matchers yeah and we just unify uh data handlers and we have this registration async action logout and login so looks like we reach our goal right now we have fully functional user uh, service and we gonna to use this service in react components on the next videos so thank you let's start integration uh, redux and react and for these purposes we need react redux package let's install it as safe dependency then we need import 
provider and also we need to import our store from the root store okay and uh, then let's wrap our application by this provider that uh, just uh, use like context in our application and uh, provide data from our store to any component that want to give an access to the store let's add one more function to the user slice that call sel uh, called selector yeah and we select user uh from our state by this function but we need to import root state from the store okay let's import root state from our store okay something like this store okay we have this root state uh type and we just take from the state uh, our user or we can make it like this just destruct user right over here and then return it uh, from the other side of our function now let's move to the login page and we have two uh, useful API in React Redux use selector and use dispatch and we need to import root state and up dispatch from the store let's add this import uh, root state and up dispatch in the login let's import select user and login uh, action from the user slice then we need to create dispatch in our login page uh, for this purpose we need to run use dispatch and provide up dispatch type uh, so then we can use this dispatch function and with dispatch we can submit data yeah we just receive login form data and then we call dispatch with login data yeah it means that we just send data that we need uh, we actually can just as uh, we can drop this async await because we don't need to wait yeah and how do we know that user uh, right now is authenticated and we have use selector with use selector we can make something like this we have root state and we want to take from the root state a particular data in our case it's just user then we just put select user uh, it's our selector from user slice that just take user uh, data and we can uh then just put this selector as a callback to this use select and actually we can skip this call and it should works by the same way yeah just select user take data and return the result we have a uh, token and error okay in case of error let's just out some error uh to the user side yeah just wrap it to the conditional feedback and if we have message we just show for the user error message in case when we have no any errors we have jwt okay and if we have some token and we have no any errors we can make redirect let's call use rotor and uh, oh we need to import of course use rotor first of all and then uh let's just create rotor in our page so let's call uh right over here use rotor and then let's call uh rotor push uh and user location yeah so it means that when we have a uh, response from the server side we put uh, information about token to the store and we select data from the store and then make redirect so we can check how it works let's run next dev server and we need to run uh, in our package json uh, strapi in dev mode okay here we go right now we have uh strapi and next.js and we can open our browser and we'll see how it looks now okay so let's go to make login yeah okay and let's try to make sign in 
Okay, everything works cool. Yeah, we have this uh, profile information, but it's not something. Okay, I just need to switch to this uh, window with browser. Okay, let's make uh, it one more time. Uh, okay, I need to clear uh, local storage. Let's drop information about the user from the local storage. And then let's uh, go to the login again. Okay, so and uh, we have this login window then we put uh, some information try to make sign in but in case when we have invited identify or password we have this error message from the backend side when we have uh, data that uh, correct we have redirect to this profile page but this profile page is just hard-coded information. Yeah, I can open and you will see that we just take information from the user mock. Okay, let's uh, make this page works too. By the same way, let's import uh, selector and dispatch right over here. Then uh, let's import uh, root state and up dispatch uh, from the store okay so and we need to take information about user right over here we don't need this mock user anymore and we need uh, to take username and email then let's replace this uh, username and email right over here and we need to uh, get um this selector select user let's import it uh in the user page too so we need to put it somewhere here okay and we have this select user we just select information and return username and email and then we have this information right over here but we have one more action logout handler that just make logout Let's take a uh, logout action from the user slice and then we need to uh, create dispatch by the same way as for the login. Let's create dispatch and then we need just to dispatch for the logout handler um, our logout uh, function. And after logout, probably we need to have the same logic. We can uh, use rotor, yeah. Uh, then we need to create rotor in the user. Okay, and then we will call rotor uh, dot push and root location. Okay, we just uh, clear any information about user, yeah, and uh, his credentials, and then just push root location uh, to redirect our user. Let's check how it looks in the browser okay so uh we have this information okay let's make logout then let's make login again okay and we have this username and email everything looks very very cool then we make logout and uh, login again we can check that in the local storage we have information about user and when we make logout this information just uh dropped yeah what if we have uh, what if if we go to the user location without any credentials yeah like example uh right now yeah we have just empty uh profile yeah and it's not something that looks cool yeah we need to redirect user probably in this case to the login page let's handle this behavior Okay, it's kind of side effect that we need to handle in our component. So let's import use effect from React. Then we need to, uh, just one sec, we need to add this use effect into our user page. Yeah. Oh, just one sec, I just dropped this use effect. Okay, now it looks much more better. And we're gonna to check if we have a username. If we have no any username or if we have an error it means that we need to call logout anyway and then just redirect user to the login page let's check how it looks now in the browser okay let's 
make page reloading okay then let's go to the user uh, login and uh, let's make sign in okay everything looks cool uh, then let's make logout and let's go to the uh, to the user page again and we have this redirect to the login page but you can see small blinks uh, between uh, between user and login redirect let's go again you can see it now yeah it's just empty page without any information and before rendering we can check if we have a username we just gonna to make render any other way we just render nothing yeah if we have username and email we just render this information any other way just now let's check it one more time okay let's go to the user page right now and you can see that we have no any user page with empty credentials but in case when we have uh, data yeah we can go to the user anytime yeah and you can see the result in case when we have this information looks like we've done a part of our login flow so see you in the next video Let's run test cases and we will see two failed test cases. And that's the reason we have uh, we could not find a Redux, a React Redux context value. And of course, we need to have a provider for our test cases. So, how can we fix it? And I want to remind you about this test utils file. Yeah, right now we have this just theme provider. But I believe that we can add a Redux provider as well right over here and everything should work fine. But before we move forward, let's check our store, yeah? And I don't like this store creator anymore, yeah? Because I don't see any real profit uh, <laughs> from this function, yeah? We can use configure store uh, directly, yeah, by this way just reducer uh, root reducer without any problems and uh, let's check how we're going to use store creator we have this user slice where we and in this place we just call uh, store creator as global store store creator and provide right over here root reducer what if we just import uh, configure store and then uh, just push uh, configure store uh, and inside configure store reducer user uh, and uh, reducer so right now it should be absolutely the same behavior we have this store creator that just uh, point to this configure store and we can provide everything that we need directly without any redundant uh, abstractions without any additional layers okay let's just drop this store creator from here and then let's switch back to the test utils yeah i believe that we need to make it a little bit more complicated let's make a custom render as a function then let's return this render from this function and let's move wrapper inside this custom render then let's import uh, configure store and provider configure store from redux JS toolkit and provider from react redux and we need to import from the store root reducer and root state yeah so right now we can use this root reducer to create a store with configure store okay let's create a store right over here with this root reducer and then we're gonna to use this store right over here okay we need to uh, wrap everything by react redux provider and put store as a parameter but what if we have uh, some demands to install uh initial state yeah we need some kind of parameter that can handle by predefined state behavior and we can extend this kind of options like this 
let's create type options and it should be something like this we have preloaded state that just a root state uh, yeah in root state it's type from our store and render options it's bunch of additional options that we can put to the render okay how can we uh, manage this uh, object we can destruct use destructurization and destruct preloaded state as a first parameter and then for the rest of the props we just collect bunch of options and we need to mark it as options yeah and right now we have options that a uh, bunch of render options and we have preloaded state that uh, Roots uh, based uh, on type root state uh, can install a default uh, initial state for our store. So let's put this parameter preloaded state to configure store. And by default, let's make it an empty object. Yeah, we don't need any of this parameter to make these things work. Okay, and let's run test cases again okay here is the result yeah we have one broken snapshot and that's because we have login and we add to the login this uh header yeah okay so we need to update snapshot uh for the login and i believe that everything should work fine because we change behavior of this custom render and we just continue to use the same model for our components and let's run storybook because probably we have some troubles with storybook too and uh, let's wait in until everything uh will be done okay so right now let's open browser and we will see the result yeah let's open login page and we have uh, could not find react redux uh, context value yeah we need to provide uh provider for all of our components that are going to use redux what can we do with this okay and we have storybook preview and in the preview we can set up uh, global uh, providers but in this in this particular case i don't see any real profit if we use just uh, global uh, store because we cannot to handle by the data yeah and data it's one of the most significant stuff when we were what yeah uh, one of the most important reason why we should use a uh, redux store and probably in this case uh, we need to wrap every story by uh, separated uh, provider with different uh, store for the login let's import uh, provider and store and then let's wrap our login by our provider with default store because i don't yeah i don't see any real profit uh, to make any other manipulation with the data in this case let's see how it looks in the browser and you can see uh, the login page yeah and when we put some broken uh data and broken password it should be yeah real uh, notification from the server side yeah invalid identifier or password okay so what about user and for the user we have absolutely the same behavior let's fix this trouble for the user too first of all let's import uh for the user uh we need to have the same model we need to import uh the provider but also we need to import configure store let's add import of uh, the mock user and let's configure store by this way we just uh need to add yeah root reducer and we need to import root reducer from the uh store okay so we configure store uh, with preloaded state and we push to the user this bunch of data yeah the token username and email so then we need to call provider and put to the provider store as store and then i believe that we should have user with uh, output that we want yeah it should be something like uh, 
uh, preloaded data. Let's take a look to the browser and we can see the profile now with username and email. Okay, we have login, we have user, everything works fine. Okay, so okay, let's check a user slice one more time. Action login, yeah. In case when we have JVT, we just gonna to call users uh, slash me, yeah. I mean JavaScript web token. And um, I want to add a little bit more details. If we have JWT and we have no any uh, information in the login data yeah so it means okay and when we have javascript web token and when we uh, have no identifier and password we can uh, call users uh, slash me endpoint with uh, javascript web token yeah and um, it means that we check our token, then awaiting uh, this response. And if we have response, we just push this information uh, to the local storage and then set up to the store. So in the layout, we can import use dispatch from React Redux. Then we need to import up dispatch from store and we can use dispatch in the layout then we can call dispatch in use isomorphic layout effect uh, we can call it in first string on this uh, use isomorphic layout effect and of course we need to import uh, login we import login from user slice okay and right now we need to call dispatch uh, login with empty object just to uh, call this uh, chain with uh, endpoint users slash me and then we um, check our token if we if everything works fine we just return data and set up it to the store so our layout it's kind of uh, handler of uh, our flow uh, from the first uh, user interactions. Let's import use selector uh, in the layout and then let's import root state uh, from store and select user from user slice. Then uh, let's call use selector uh, and uh, probably we need username yeah, in this case. And we're going to use select user selector. I want to add a little bit more interactions right over here. When, uh, here we have a link to the login. And we can change it like this. Yeah, We can um, use uh, username. Just one sec. Username and username right over here. It means that when we have authenticated user, we want to open user page and show user uh, icon. In case when we have no uh, user uh, in the store, we need to open login page and show login uh, button. Let's check how it looks. And I don't want to make this video longer than uh, 20 minutes. Okay, so. See you in the next video. Let's continue to develop our login flow and we have this ternary operator and it not looks good. Yeah, we need to add one more case when we have error. Yeah, when we have no JVT and login data. Okay, and looks like it's not quite a straightforward way to do this. Let's make login data uh, type with different signature. Let's make identifier and password as required field. But right over here, let's add undefined as one of possible scenario. Yeah, when we call create a sync sync, we uh, can call it without any data. Yeah, so it means that we can call it like this yeah just dispatch login so then let's uh, make this logic by slightly different way let's make a function create request with uh, two parameters jwt and login data yeah so and we have three 
three possible scenarios when we have JVT and when we have no login data when we have login data and when we just throw an error yeah with invalid login request why do I have this object for the error because I want to make it by universal style yeah with this add matcher yeah just to make this object with property error okay so and what should we do for the first scenario we return fetch uh, with out house token for the second it's it should be uh house local with uh login data yeah just different request and when we have no any jvt or login data we just throw an error okay and let's refactor our response yeah and right now i see it like this yeah we just uh call create request then we um take this response uh and um, so on and so far yeah we just handle this request by the same way as before i see one more problem in user slice test we need to add right over here just empty uh, call of the login function without any objects let's run this test case in watch mode just to be sure okay just run all of uh test uh cases and we have uh 16 past test suites okay everything works fine uh let's check how it looks in the browser okay here we go right now when we have aus yeah when we already have token in our local storage we can press uh button user and then we have profile we click logout and okay we clear our local storage and then we have this login button again we can like example try to add some invalid information in this case we have invalid identifier or password okay in case when we use uh, valid user data we then uh, gonna to gonna redirect to the profile page okay and uh, before we just yeah have this uh J jvt as invalid token we always uh will uh be authenticated okay and we have this layout as a part of serious functionality for our pages we can open up and you will see that layout it's uh wrapper common wrapper for all of our pages yeah and we have provider and layout as basic wrappers for our page components so we have this login registration and user and it won't work by the way that we have on our application without layout wrapper so and i believe that we uh, in our test environments should have absolutely the same behavior as in application so let's add one more renderer we have custom uh, basic renderer and let's add page renderer let's import layout from components layout and it should be the same logic as for the custom renderer but instead of uh, theme provider we have layout yeah layout and provider and we are going to create absolutely the same store yeah so let's export uh, additional uh, page renderer so to be more precise in uh, test cases let's drop this redundant uh, import we can use page renderer as renderer and in this case we're gonna render a login uh, inside our layout and it should be the same render uh, as we expected for our application okay and after this update i see that we have uh, two failed uh, tests and first one it's about um, get all by role alerts yeah it means that Right over here we should have three alerts yeah let's add third uh, check i want to remind you that we add uh, this uh, third okay let's open a uh, login page we have uh, this third conditional feedback uh, in the header yeah so and right now we have three alerts on the page okay and just 
to be sure that everything is okay this conditional feedback it's a uh, feedback component yeah and this feedback component it has role um, alert yeah every feedback it has role alert yeah oh sorry this role alert it's under input uh component yeah and as far as i remember for the layout we have role alert in the input too yeah because we have search so we can easily check that right now we have three alerts on the screen and we can match snapshot uh, for all of these components and for the second problem of course we need to update snapshot because we have layout so let's run test case and after snapshot updates we have no any problems and what should we do for the registration let's make it by the same way as for the login we just import rotor use selector use dispatch and we need of course root state up dispatch and from the user slice we need to uh, take uh, registration action and we need to take uh, registration data and registration data it's the same type as registration form so we can just drop registration form and replace it by registration data okay let's create this patch inside our registration and then let's call inside on submit uh, this patch registration with the data by the same way, let's take information about uh, token and error from um, user uh, use selector uh, from our store. In case if we have uh, JVT uh, and we have no any error, we need to call rotor and of course we need to import rotor and then we need to create our rotor if we have a token and we have no any error we need to push uh, our user to the user page and if we have some errors let's just uh, out this error on the uh, registration page okay let's check in the browser how it works when we go to the login page we can uh, log in okay and then we can reload page as many times as we want but we still have our token and we can open our profile then we can click log out page and then we have create account and let's like example try to add uh existing user and we will see the result okay so let's call it uh john <coughs> dot you can see the error from the backend side that email is already taken it's great let's add a different one and still email is already taken okay let's add uh, something like this and we have registration flow too yeah and after registration we have authenticated user yeah you can see how it looks now okay it looks like we've done our uh, login flow and registration and for the next video i want to finish our test cases and see you in the next video bye and i can show you one more problem with our deployment right now we have run of our ui tests and trouble with uh, registration and layout and the problem is um our provider i mean our uh, provider redux because we have this example with a login when we import this provider and wrap our uh, story to the provider restore we have layout but we have no any provider let's import provider and store and then we can put it as decorator uh, because in case when we have some um, potential uh, wrappers we can use decorators for these purposes works like this we have array of decorators and then we just uh, put right over here provider with our store and wrap our story by the provider let's run storybook 
Okay, and you can see that layout works fine, but registration page could not find React Redux context value. Let's fix registration page. And for the registration, we import provider, store, and wrap everything by the provider. Let's take a look to the registration, and you can see that it looks fine. Layout works fine, and registration works fine. So, right now we are ready to deploy. We need to commit our changes, and then push our branch. We trigger rebuild and then we will be waiting until our rebuild will be done. Okay, we have some changes on the UI side. Let's check our build. And we have registration page that, uh, of course, it's just because we add right over here a header yeah, with uh, feedback. Okay, we can accept these changes. Everything looks fine. So oh, then we can make merge. I want to remind you that for every lesson we have a particular uh, pull request. You can look through the readme and you can see every step and every lesson bind to some pull request that you can open and learn something new from this code. So then let's check login test cases. And we have a uh, render check client validation check but we have no any server validation check let's make two scenarios with error and with successful login flow so let's recall how our login uh, works we check our identifier and password and in case when we have match with user mock we return a successful response and you can see how it works in our test case. We render a login, then we find a button sign in, uh, put some data um, to the identifier and password, and it's of course data that um, won't match with won't match with uh, our identifier and password in user mock. You can see how it looks in the user mock. Okay, so then we click submit button and of course we should have invalid identifier and password message on the screen because we have um, this, uh, just one sec, we have this server feedback, yeah, with error message uh, and our handler just uh, push validation error and it looks like this, invalid identifier and pa or password in message. And it should work by this way. We have this error message and we can find it in our test case. Okay, it's first uh, way to check it when we have validation error. And then let's check successful login. What should we do in successful case? We have this use router, and in case when we find a uh, user, we are going to authenticate, and we have JWT token, yeah, and we should trigger router uh, push and road user. So we can mock this router, and then we will check that we have a push call with this argument uh, user. So let's import use router because uh, we uh, gonna to replace this use router definition by just mock and it should be something like this yeah we need to uh, mock next router uh, then we gonna to require actual uh, from next router module and we replace use router by just mock function so then we can uh, call, uh, we can create mock function push and we um, use pattern like this. We uh, have use rotor, but we know that on the previous state step we mock it. Yeah, we have just function like mock function in the rotor right now. So we can um, call this uh, code it's type assertion use rotor as just mock and then we have mock return value uh, function uh, in the just mock and we mock it as 
push yeah so we have this push methods in this uh object it means that we can call push and then we will check that this push function to has been called so then let's uh render our login and let's find submit button and let's import mock user because we just gonna to use data from the mock user so then let's uh, fill user inputs by email and password from the mock user email and press submit button of course we need to prop everything by the act because we're gonna do change uh, our state and in react testing library we have one more methods wait one more method wait for wait for it's very useful method we can drop uh, some code uh, uh, that gonna to check we expect some action or reaction and we wait until this action or reaction uh, will be done okay what should we wait for and right now we should be wait for push to have been called with user yeah because we have this push mock function and we expect that push to have been called with user it means that we're gonna to uh, re-render our component and our state gonna update but we wait until our push function to have been called with yeah until this if block uh, gonna work yeah and by the same way we have registration test cases with server validation check and um, error cost error check yeah and with successful registration uh, flow yeah um, I want to remind you again how our registration works yeah and when we send data to the registration endpoint we gonna check that our data that we send uh, match with the user mock uh, data and in case when we have full match we uh, return successful registration response in another way we return error okay and uh, we have server validation error check when we fill by some random data uh, and send it to the backend site and then we wait in until uh, we have server error and error occupied during account creation and we have successful registration check uh, in this case we fill user um, uh fields by user inputs by uh, mock user data and submit and then we uh will be waiting until we have push uh that has been called with this uh argument user so and last but not least we have user test case and for the user test case it's quite simple we mock rotor we have preloaded state with uh, some user mock data then we check that render works fine with some preloaded state then we check uh, that user with preloaded state and as far as I remember we have this page renderer that uh, uh, contain this uh, parameter preloaded state that we push to the configurer store and then we uh, push this store with preloaded state to the provider so it means that when we uh, create a store with preloaded data then we can find data that we want yeah on the page render side so and we uh check that we have uh in the that uh we have in the document uh username and email uh text and when we have no any uh user information when we have empty uh fields as preloaded state we expect that on the user side and i want to recall it uh right over here when we have no username uh, or uh, when we have an error in the store we then just dispatch logout and push uh login to the router so and right over here we push empty state and wait until uh we have push that has been called with this argument login let's run test cases one more time 
And then let's open coverage report. We can open coverage report in default browser. Okay. And then let's check the result. Okay, we have good coverage report. Yeah, we have 96% of the coverage statements. Uh, just one sec, I need to reset. Uh, okay, by file, okay. 60% uh, branches, 100% uh, function, and 100% line. It's, it's, it's a good matrix. And one uh, trouble in button file. Yeah, we have no ch any checks uh, for several uh, branches. Yeah, that we need to check probably by some uh, snapshot rendering on or something like this yeah but our coverage report looks very cool yeah so uh, okay i believe that we won't go more to the test cases uh we're gonna to make more functionality for our application okay so see you in the next video hi i see updates of strapi and with npx and pm check updates i see that we can update strapi user permission plugin uh internationalization and beta sqlite 3. let's run npm check updates with you uh flag and then we'll see new versions in our packageson and we need to run npm install Okay, I see the result. We have some warning, but nothing critical. Okay, let's try to run Strapi. And let's just uh, call uh, script develop. And we will see the result. Let's open content uh, type builder in Strapi. And we have header, description, and cover for the course. Uh, will be enough for our purposes to represent course completely. I believe that we need to add several more fields. And first field, uh, let's make it as text and let's call it link. And uh, it should be short text, uh, required field, a unique field and okay let's uh finish on this point okay we have header we have link we have description and let's add another field uh type text uh subtitle yeah just to make short description um and let's make it short text let's make it required field unique or it doesn't matter at all but let's make it a unique field okay so uh it's of course uh gonna be additional index in the database and probably we um okay let's uh make it a unique field let's check header as well advanced setting of course header should be required and unique okay so we have cover it's uh kind of media uh yes just single media uh let's apply uh just only for images yeah uh let's make it required field uh and so probably we have everything that we need is header description cover link and subtitle okay let's save this scheme and you can see how it looks in the code. We have schema in uh, API course content type uh, and then schema course. And you can see the scheme description. Yeah, it's kind of that structure that gonna apply to our uh, database. And uh, you can see that right now uh, we add uh, required attributes and unique uh, for um, header. Uh, we have uh, cover uh, type media, a load type just on the images. We drop uh, all other, uh, all uh, all the other types. Uh, we have type media um, and link and subtitle with a bunch of uh, attributes that we applied for this schema. And we can make commit just to fix a schema for our uh, product.
But let's move back to our content manager and we need to add uh, some data. Yeah, we have this uh, representation of uh, course. Probably we can uh, change, uh, yeah, we can configure view how it should looks. Let's make a header as the first field, then link, then subtitle, cover, and description uh, at the end of our model. Okay, let's save uh, this uh, view. Okay, confirm. Then let's go to the content manager and uh, right now we can add data that we need. Okay, so let's save the data and let's uh, change the second course. Okay, just fill uh, all the missing fields for our courses, then save. Okay, so and we have this collection. Okay. Okay, here we go. Right now, I just sent query to API courses and you can see how our that data uh, uh, will look. And you uh, can see header, description, uh, and uh, created it, updated it, uh, published link, subtitle, and the same bunch of data for the uh, courses. But we don't have any media data yet, yeah? and we need to add one more parameter to the API. And we need to add this populate, and then we uh, can select what fields do we want. In this case, let's just add star. Okay, and uh, of course, we need to have. Uh, token yeah and you can see the result now yeah we have header description uh, subtitle link and cover yeah with different formats thumbnail large medium small and you can say hash uh, pass everything that we need and the same structure for our second mm, uh, course type script basic you can see absolutely the same description so we have a uh, data collection, we have some test data, uh, everything that we need is prepare uh, our page to this data. So, of course, if we have some data, we need to add types for this data. And uh, we have <clears throat> an example of uh, data, yeah, with header, description, and it looks like common pat pattern yeah we have data and we have bunch of information let's add first type meta yeah and for the meta we can easily re reproduce uh the structure yeah pagination page page size page count and total everything as number type and let's look a little bit closely to the data and you can see uh a pattern in the image structure you can see thumbnail large and medium small it's the same pattern and uh, on the top level actually we just gonna to reproduce uh, something similar yeah and we don't need probably all of these fields we can uh, just select uh, fields that we need let's describe image information or let's call it image formats yeah and uh, we have name uh, URL width and height and probably we don't need anything uh, except these fields and for the cover we have data and ID and attributes and on the top level we have data as array and inside we have object id attributes and so on and so far so data it uh, can be object and array but with the same structure from the items perspective yeah so we can reproduce a data data structure and it should be something like this data it's uh type uh, of the attribute yeah we have uh, this generic type by default it's record with a key string and uh, from the data we don't know what type it should be yeah it's just unknown and id it's always number and attributes it's pointer for this generic data type
So, uh, we can describe this cover now because we have data and we can describe what type for the uh, cover it should be. And we have type image, yeah? Image, uh, any, I, I believe that any image uh, is just a bunch of data. Uh, then on the top level, it's image format. And then for every formats, we just uh, continue to reproduce this recursive data structure. Yeah, we just combine together the image format with bunch of formats, uh, thumbnail, large, medium, or small, with the same structure as on the top level. It's actually not absolutely the same, but from our perspective, it doesn't matter at all because we just select bunch of fields that we gonna use in our application actually, yeah? So, and let's go above uh, to this recursion hierarchy and you can see the top level, yeah, data. It's just array of courses, yeah? And we have object course that we can describe like this, yeah? Course, it's a data again, because it's kind of recursion. We go to the top level of this recursion and it's header, subtitle, URL, a description, publish that and cover. And we have link that uh, just string type, yeah? Here we have this link. Okay, it's again, it's everything that we need. Of course, it's a little bit more. We have created it, updated it, published it, but I don't care about these fields. I want to have just only one date published at. Okay, so we have course description. Let's take a look what happens, uh, what happened when we uh, call, like example, our uh, API without any authentication. Let's check it. Let's just make non notification then send request, and we have this response. Yeah, it's error data that we can uh, describe as well. Yeah, error, it's just status number, name, uh, string, message string, details, any. Yeah, and you can see how it looks. We just have data as null, and then we have this error. Yeah, data, it's again reproduced the same structure. So we have top level of uh, all of our requests all of our responses it should be something like this okay let's put this on the top level it should be response data type yeah we have a data as type data uh, probably we have error probably not and probably we have meta or probably not not we don't know and this um, uh, data uh, parameter in the generic it could be null uh, by default yeah so we have null data type and data can be null by default in case of error like example Okay, so we have this response data, meta, error, and description for our course data structure. So, probably we have everything that we need to continue develop our page course. Okay, so see you in the next video. Right now we have trouble with 403 forbidden error. When we gonna call courses endpoint. And that, that's the trouble. Yeah, because it should be public collection. We should give an access to non authenticated user as well. Because anybody can see uh, courses on this page, yeah? How can we fix this in Strapi? And in Strapi, we have in settings uh, roles. And we have authenticated and public roles uh, by default. And we can apply uh, some permissions that we need to a particular collection for public role. Let's add find and find one to permission uh, permission to a course endpoint. And probably that's all that we need. Let's save this permission. And let's check how it looks when we call this endpoint again let's send the request and you can see the result yeah right now we have no any error at all and we can call uh by id 
some course like example first course yeah without any problems so right now we have courses as public collection and we can continue to develop this page i want to remind you that we have had component that can provide any meta meta information to our page like example title any meta headers and uh links as well yeah we can handle like example fav icon per every page or any other thing that we want okay and then we have this course wrapper and we gonna to render some random data yeah just four times in a row so in this case we need to add this data and this data on the backend side but it's actually should be absolutely the same data per every user and probably we don't need to uh, run fetch for every request we can use feature uh, ssg static site generator and that it means that we gonna to pre-render this page when we gonna to build our static and we have this get static props special function uh, and we have requirements when we can use this function the data required to render the page uh, is available at build time ahead of user user's request. Okay, it's of course it's our uh, purpose. Yeah, we have uh, this data and it can be predictable. Yeah, it's going ahead uh, of a user request. Data comes from headless CMS. It's our case. Uh, this the, the page uh, must be rendered by sale and very fast yeah get static uh, props generates html and json files uh, that can be cached on cdn yeah and that's very cool yeah we got, uh, it's of course again our case uh, the data can be public publicly cached yeah it's of course it's 100 percent much that we want yeah we want to uh uh, fetch this data from the server then we want to pre-build all pages that we need and we will show the user our static content we have data type uh, get static props and then we can export get static props uh, as get static props it's of course a same function because we want to fetch the data from the backend side so then we need to take API URL from process and next public Stripe API URLs. And we have response from the endpoint courses with populate star. Yeah, we want to take all the fields from this collection. Okay, and I want to remind you that we have special data types, course type and response that we can use for our purposes. And we expect that we have course response that uh, response with array of courses yeah and we just put the response yeah there's a data type as array of courses and i believe that it should works fine for our response then let's wait until we have some data and we have data meta and error from the backend side in case when we have status less than 200 or more than 300 we return empty bunch of props empty array of courses and empty object of metadata in any other cases we just return courses as data and meta as meta we can use a uh, syntax like this we can uh, um, just cast this data as uh courses and then we can use just names of our uh, variables and it maps by object structure then we can provide to the generic of next page data uh, struct uh, data props that we need and we need courses yeah and it should be array of course type uh, because we have no any state i can drop this redundant return and then we can use destructurization right over here yeah just to destruct prop courses from the 
um, input uh, argument prop props yeah so we just have the structurization of this courses data and let's instead of this uh, dummy generation of bunch of uh, courses with the same content let's use a uh, map of our courses yeah we have course id we have attributes as header subtitle published uh, we have cover and i believe for the bunch of courses it will it, it should be enough just uh, to make medium cover yeah it shouldn't be more than medium okay uh, so then we need to push these props right over here okay so what should we return and probably uh it should be something like this okay it's id yeah because id is unique and uh, we can uh, make this reference to id we have header and we have link and we make link to page course by some id again yeah because we're gonna to make query by this parameter id we have this image props and it's kind of bunch of props where it's height alt uh and for the alt uh, it's uh, cover for header yeah it's cover for particular curves we have src uh parameter uh, and it's um pointer to the local host yeah and we have URL right over here and probably we shouldn't hard code this uh host because it's gonna to be dynamic and by some other way we need to deploy this backend and we need to regulate this parameter let's add to the environment one more variable let's call it just next public strapi url and i want to use it for our index page we need to use the same pattern yeah like this so we can take this variable strapi url okay or let's put it uh, above our home component and let's use in the src our strapi url yeah and it should be something like this we just glue together strap url with this url parameter from the image yeah from the cover uh attributes format medium yeah so then we have subtitle we wrap our subtitle by header of sort level and we have this time uh tag in html from the semantic perspective we can uh use this um tag for data or daytime or whatever we want from the time or daytime perspective so right now it looks like a solution yeah let's check how it looks and we need to run our dev server let's just run script next uh dev okay and here we go we have error about invalid src props because host name local hosts is not configured under images in your next.config.js and we need to add this host uh, to the next.config.js okay it should be something like this images and we then just uh, put domains localhost uh, with port 1337 uh, and localhost okay so then we need to rerun our uh, web server let's just switch off and then let's run it again okay oh great and we can see how it looks now yeah it's just dynamic content and we still have no any page that behind this courses uh, but we can see the result and it's something that we need to fix because right now we have this content and it's centered yeah and it shouldn't be by this way it should be some spaces between header image and this kind of footer for this uh tile yeah okay so let's fix template little bit and here we go right now you can see that we have link and course link that uh, inside our section but i don't want to make it by this way i want to have section inside link 
That looks much more better and uh, we need to move this weights and mean weights to this course link uh, component, yeah? Because it doesn't make any sense in the section anymore. And we need to make this curse link display flex because uh, by any other way it won't be positioning as we expected. Okay, and let's change our uh, section because right now we have center positioning. Let's just add a space between for the justify content prop. Uh, I mean, this space between should be along main axis and let's uh, because we have flex direction column and let's add padding to uh we uh, uh weights mean yeah uh it means that we just calculate what uh parameter uh will be more yeah width or height yeah and then we're just going to take fraction and we're going to use minimal fraction of our screen proportion so let's check how it looks uh in the browser and uh, you can see the result now yeah it looks much more better yeah we have this centered content but uh it just position header on the same level then image and then this uh description or subtitle below yeah and then data that positioning on the center okay it looks really cool yeah and much more better than previous version okay so looks like we've done our first part so see you in the next video bye i have several problems on ci side see one of them it's course test.tsx we have trouble with a snapshot because we've updated this course uh component but we have no any updates uh in the snapshot okay it's quite simple to fix and one more trouble it's uh in the story home because we cannot read property map or undefined because we have no any data and this prop uh, courses it's absolutely necessary for our component home so let's uh fix both of this trouble and first one it was quite simple we just need to run test with flag u and in this case we just updated uh this snapshot and about second one yeah uh, we need to uh put real uh prop courses with some data and how can we do this uh we have uh, this example of uh, the data from the endpoint yeah so let's just uh copy this array of data and paste it as our response as far as i remember we have special uh uh, mocks uh, directory and we have this uh, um, scheme when we can just add some courses and we just add uh, our course uh, our response and as you can see it's just bunch of mock data yeah we just have these two courses so then we can easily import right over here our mock data and okay and we have this type course and we need to assert our data as course array yeah and uh we have small trouble yeah property url is missing in type okay it's 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 okay we can make as unknown and then as course and everything should work fine yeah we just dropped first of all any information about types and then we assert it to type course so let's run storybook again okay, we can see the result now and it's error invalid src prop on next image host local host is not configured okay i don't want to make it by the hard way let's uh make instead of hard way some soft way we just put uh, both of this logo to a public page and then we change data and um, yeah it, it should works let's just make it by this way okay so in the public in cover we have hands-on react just cover and ts cover 
Okay, then we need to replace every link in our data to uh, somewhere near here, yeah, to the cover. Okay, and we have this uploads. And you can see the result when we call something in the covers, uh, we just take file as is, yeah. Okay, I put uh, cover uh, hands on React.js and TS cover. So then I need to find uh, these links in my test data and replace to new pass, passes. And okay, I have this uploads and this uh, postfix uh, DCF1 and so on and so far. And we can replace it by my React.js cover. Okay, looks cool for the first part. Let's replace links for the second part. We have this uploads thumbnail TS logo. And uh, the main postfix is TS logo and so on and so far. Yeah, we need to add uh, to replace this kind of things. Okay, so looks like we've done it. We have this uh, TS cover. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, we just replace worlds and that's all. Yeah, we haven't fixed the width, height and so on and so far. Okay, so so when we have this trouble again and uh, that's because we have this local host 13, uh, 37. Uh, it's kind of URL that we <clears throat> Uh, include to our address uh, automatically from env variable. I can show you uh, just to recall this information. We have this strapy URL parameter in line 45 and then we uh, combine together strapy URL uh, with image URL and that's the reason why we have this trouble, yeah? And of course in the end uh, we have this variable that we declared as HTTP localhost 1337. Uh, but we can overwrite this variable. It's one of the possible fix. I can add env configuration to main.js file in storybook dot storybook directory and we can uh, spread previous config and add next public strapy url as empty string so it means that we drop this uh, absolute url and put just a relative way uh, so and let's reload our uh, storybook and we will see the result Okay, here we go. We have this images. Uh, I mean, just places for images, but we have no images. Yeah. And to be honest, I tried to fix it by different ways, but I can't. And probably I just don't have solution now. So uh, let's uh, just push it as this just to fix our trouble. Okay, just to recall, I gonna add env uh, to the main JS uh, to this storybook configuration. We have uh, courses mock with mock data for the courses. I've added this uh, cover for the TypeScript, but it doesn't work and I can fix it on this stage probably later i will find some uh, possible way to uh, fix it and we just push this uh, mock data to the story home okay so and also i have one more directory storybook static that i uh, put to the git ignore uh, just because after build we have this directory with this information that we don't need to uh, track and let's take a look to the result of our deployment right now we have trouble with versal deploy and that's because of our backend data yeah you can see that right now when we are gonna to render uh, data we trying to connect to our host yeah uh, and it's kind of local host and of course it it, it has trouble because we cannot to receive data from my local host when we are on the remote environment yeah we need to deploy our backend and then uh, it works fine okay and about our 
storybook it looks like we have some visual difference yeah let's check home yeah and you can see that uh right now we have sm small changes uh, of positioning yeah and we can accept these changes and then we have changes in course component that we can accept too because we just changed this component yeah components so uh looks like we've done uh with uh storybook fix but we have trouble with versal deploy okay um we will fix it for the future video lessons yeah uh okay so see you on the next video bye okay and i can show you the result its deployment are strappy to the amazon and uh, right now you can see our uh, content manager and you can see the response from the api yeah it works fine we have api and we have this uh dashboard that can help us to manage content or change the data or any other stuff that we need okay let's start from the docker file and docker file can help us to build our uh, application in container and based on node 16 uh image we set up a node environment production and uh, we install environment variable not env as our argument not environment uh, work dear as opt uh, then we copy package json and package lock uh, set up environment pass and uh, run npm install then we set up work dear to opt uh, up uh, copy all of our content from the backend and uh, then we set up not uh, environment probably uh, we don't need to set up it twice yeah probably we can drop this line uh, we have a production environment above yeah so i can drop this line then we run build and we going to expose uh, port 1337 uh, then our command to run npm start and we have docker ignore file uh, we ignore cache uh, and git and build and node models and uh, data uh, we don't need these directories i have this temporary uh, directory with database okay i just want to leave it as this that's just little a uh, hack and of course it's not a production deploy for the production we need real database not sqlite i think and we need to deploy our dat database by different scheme i want to keep it as simple as possible just to uh, show you work example so then we can build our container and we can run our container on some specific port yeah we have docker run command just to check that our container works fine then we can deploy this container with AWC CLI and AWC CLI it provides for us a possibility to um, deploy container as well to special AWS services and we need to use this installation guide it's quite simple for your specific uh, operational system you can use whatever you want and then you can check installation when you be ready uh, with this uh, command AWC version yeah then you need to go to the identity and access management and manage access key so uh, you can create any key that you want yeah it's like example uh, my key id yeah it's pair uh, that you generate and you'll see only once this key i can show you an example um, uh, i can show you the example how can you generate it you just press create access key and then you will see something like this access key id and secret access key you can download this file because you never see secret access key again so and you will see the result yeah it's uh, right over here 
but I really don't need this key. I just uh, deactivate this key. Yeah, so uh, then I can delete this key if I want to. So I need to copy and paste uh, my key ID. Okay, you can see that right now this key is deleted. Then you need to run on your local environment AWC configure and then you need to put access key ID, uh, then you need to put secret access key and so on and so far. Yeah. So I don't need this uh, for this step because I have already have these credentials. So then you need to deploy your container to Amazon Elastic Container Registry. And uh, uh, you can select private or public repository. Then you need to uh, choose repository name and you can select logo if you want, <clears throat> content type if you want, uh, add any descriptions and then put create repository. And I have already have repository name courses box with this public URL. And after these steps, you need to uh, install um, a login uh, data to the Docker. And you can run this very simple uh, CLI script. Yeah. And where can you get this script? Yeah. And we have uh, button uh, on this repository a uh, view push commands and then you'll see what uh, commands do you need to run to make uh, this things works yeah you first of all need to log in on the docker site with AWC as credentials uh, then you um, need to build your container uh, with uh, docker build uh, and then uh, name of your container tag for your container and dot as a pass if you run it in your uh, directory. Then uh, you need to uh, tag your container uh, and you can push uh, your container with this latest command docker push. After this deployment, you need to go to the clusters, Elastic Container Service. And then you need to create cluster. I can show you how my cluster looks. Yeah, uh, let's just press an update and we will see all of our configurations. You need to uh, make task definition, uh, then uh, you need to select line launch type uh, EC2 because uh, you need to configure uh, both of network and uh, container. Then you need to choose service name uh, and uh, number of tasks, it should be one. Yeah. So then uh, you need to press next step. Uh, about load balancing, you can skip this step and I don't have any auto scaling. Yeah, you just press next step and you will see this configuration. Okay, so after this step, when you have this uh, cluster, yeah, we just can cancel this issue. We have um, task definition top. And in this tab task definitions, you can create new task. I can show you my task. And this task, uh, I have, of course, name for this task, uh, default mode uh, for the network, uh, task, uh, task execution none, and you need to choose uh, task memory and task save CPU unit. Okay, so then you uh, need to choose a container and I just select courses box container. Uh, you can add a new image. Uh, here it should be a button. Uh, then you need to choose image and uh, you will see the result that you add a new container. After your task definition, you need to run service on this task. And you will see uh, in the actions tab, we have create service or update service. And then you need to select cluster, service name, and so on and so far. Yeah. So uh, when you have service task and cluster, uh, then if everything uh, going to be right, you will see logs. In service, we have events. And for the events, uh, it's as you can see, we have 
uh, state that service containers uh, causes box service has started with one task. And then on the logs tab, you will see the latest log. Yeah, it's uh, all of our logs. Yeah, we just start our, our server and then uh, you can see that we run admin or API or so on and so far. We can track our logs and we'll see the result. Then you can go to AC2 panel and you will see uh, the result. Yeah, here we have top uh, instances and you can see running instances and right now I have only one instance i can choose it and we have this public uh, url that you can open and then you will see the absolutely the same result if you uh, will do it by this way okay so and but it won't work by default through the http you need to add security group and I have a courses box security group. I can show you how it looks. And uh, let's, uh, can I open it by this way? Okay. I can show you my uh, map. Everything that you need, it's edit and inbound rules. And you need to add map between ports, yeah, because your traffic that going to be through the uh, 80 80 port or 80 uh gonna to be um, re, um uh, gonna to be much with your local environment yeah it's gonna to be kind of redirected yeah by your local host uh, environment so and you need to add this simple match you need to add uh, all of zero to make broadcast uh tcpip uh request yeah and then it should be matched to your local environment so and it was just a review and i have great article about deploy and run docker image with uh, a great explanation yeah with videos that step by step explain you a lot about deployment process and everything about docker and stuff okay just because this course is not about uh aws or infrastructure or devops site i just uh, leave you at this as this if you want you can leave uh, a comments if i uh, will be have uh, lots of comments from your side. I just gonna make uh, one more video or just uh, two more video about infrastructure, AWC and deployment. And probably we can make a little bit uh, more production deployment uh, together. Okay, so we'll be waiting for your comments. So see you. Thank you. We can fix our build query quickly. We have an option to make different environment variables one with uh, postfix local and one with just env variable for the local we have local post urls and for the env we have amazon environment variables urls so let's make a commit and we will fix our build so just add fix environment variables and then we need to make push when we push our changes to the pull request, you can see that we trigger our build again. And right now it's gonna to build. And you can see that stage one where sale deployment has completed. Let's check our build. Okay, everything looks cool. Let's visit our deploy. Okay, great. And we have our deployment. And one of the possible fix we need to add new domain uh, for the images as far as you remember we have uh, this domains list and we just need to add this uh, amazon environment domain to this list okay and after you push we have this message that deployment has completed okay we have this uh, images in the preview let's visit our site okay and everything works fine we have this images okay everything looks good yeah for our website okay let's check our uh, lighting okay everything looks cool too for the light mode okay so uh looks like we've done it and right now we have server site rendering deployment of the backend and as i told you uh this course is not about backend or devops 
if you want to check more details how can you deploy docker image to the aws you can check this article i attached this article link to our um, additional resources and you will see step by step uh, guide how can you deploy your docker container to the aws yeah so uh and one more thing it's not a production deployment because for the production you need to add uh, s3 bucket to the images and then you need to add this bucket uh, to your stripy configurations if you want to uh, have these guides you can leave any comments under videos and i'm going to make more videos about aws infrastructure and stuff so thank you if you want to have dynamic routing like courses and course page uh, we need to have one more feature in our toolkit it's get static pass uh, this method um, uh, provides information about pass that we need to generate statically and we return just bunch of paths that we want to have for our application that next generate during the build time. So how can we use it for our application? We can add new page by this way. We create a directory course and inside course we have file with this naming. We need to wrap it by this square bracket brackets and uh, then put name of the parameter in this case it's id and inside of our page we have get static pass function that define what pass do we have in our application yeah uh, and uh, this course page that just uh, render per every course let's generate all possible paths what it should be for the pass? We need to add a course and a list of all of our IDs for our existing courses. So we have URL for our application, yeah, and we have uh, the same scheme as the previous as for the previous page. Then we need to call our courses uh, endpoint uh, by a backend URL, yeah, and we get the response. Let's create type course response that just responds with course type data. And then let's handle scenario when we have error. Yeah, we have uh, this course response and of course we need to have courses response in case when we have multiple entity. Uh, and uh, this courses response, it's response from the backend side in case when we have some error status, we check uh, status and we return just empty pass. In case when we have data, we map our data and take ID and create uh, passes that we need to pre-build. It's a bunch of uh, paths that we put to the return parameter. Yeah, We handle this array of data and put it to the return data. And we have this error get static pass was added without a get static pass props in course id page because we want to pre-build all of our paths without any server side uh, generation code yeah we're just trying to pull data from the backend side per every entity but we can't so we need to add get static props we have an experience with get static props and it's absolutely the same scheme but we need to take id parameter per uh, every run yeah because next just gonna to pre-build every possible pages every possible page yeah and we have id we just fetch data for the course and then we handle it in case when we have error we return empty data in case when we have data we return just course data and we can add metadata for our props we just take meta for this uh, response and then put it to the props 
Let's check how it looks now in the browser and we need to open our page. Yeah, and you can see that per ev for every page we have the same static uh, preview. Yeah, we need to fix it based on the data that we have for the get static props. We can destruct this data right over here and then return uh, per every page unique content. We know that we have course type and meta uh, in course response meta. Then we have destructurization and we destruct all of our attributes and we can use it for our rendering. Let's add a uh, head with this uh, title, uh, description and with our icon. Then let's add import for the next image and we fill our content. We have center tile with header. Then we have uh, this image. And I want to make layout fill uh, with cover for he our header and uh, SRC link. And it's actually small trouble. Yeah, we have this local host URL, but we cannot uh, use this local host. We have our uh, parameter in the environment variable strapi URL. Let's use this parameter stripe URL for the SRC attribute. And uh, I just want to use uh, layout field uh, cover uh, SRC to our image and object fit contain to make uh, this image uh, like uh, cover that fill all of our uh, area with uh, this uh, item, yeah, parent item. And you can see how it looks now. Our image just fill all of this uh, area because we need to make parent with position relative. So let's make it. Let's import styled from emotion styled and then let's add image container. And our image container should be with position relative, width 100%. Max width uh, should be limited by max width uh, parameter. This Max width, it's kind of attribute that we can take from the width because our image on the Strapi, it has attribute width and height. We just have limit by this max width. And let's fix height as 30 view widths. So then let's wrap our image by this image container. We have a max width, yeah, and we just take width parameter from the attributes format uh, for the large uh, image, and we don't need this height parameter. So we have this wrapper that just uh, limit uh, grow for our image, yeah? So let's check how it looks in the browser, and it looks much more better, yeah? We have this uh, header, we have this image, but we have no any formats for this markdown, yeah? How can we handle by markdown? And that's great library markdown it that make this task very by very simple way. We have markdown it a library, then we need to create an instance of markdown and we can render any markdown code to the HTML. So then we are going to use our HTML for the component. Let's install this library and let's use it. I want to make this on the server side because we have get static props that can handle this markdown data per every page. So let's install it as dev dependency. And then we have message that we have no any types definition for the markdown. Let's install uh, types markdown it as dev dependency, of course. And then we should fix this trouble. Yeah, we have this uh, markdown that already in our application. And then we need to handle this markdown code and uh, get static props uh, method. And we just create markdown instance. Then we uh, 
have this structurization pattern we just destruct data and in the attributes we destruct in every attributes in this data and add description that uh, markdown render and we render our description per every page so it means that we pre-render every uh, just generate every page with uh, this uh, statically generated uh, markdown that gonna be uh, uh, usual HTML uh, code and let's add to the rendering uh, something like this we just limit uh, widths by widths of our image and then we um, add dangerously set in our HTML and we have description as HTML code let's check how it looks in the browser okay here we go right now it's image and we have this description it looks very cool yeah it looks uh as we expected yeah we have this header we have this image and we have description so right now this scheme works uh by this way yeah we have main page and we have page per every um per every course yeah and you can see that we have title individual title for every page yeah we have typescript basic title for the uh, page for the typescript basic course and we have uh, title hands-on react uh, for the course uh, for the hands-on react okay okay so and looks like we already have all of the content that we can pre-build yep uh, content that doesn't depend on user uh, and we can pre-build this content uh, before user uh, open it and so for the next step we can make search but for the search it won't work by this way because it depends on user uh, input and in this case we should have uh, server side rendering and it should be the last step for our application so see you in the next video bye and we have built trouble deployment has failed and i see error uh, that we trying to program during um, the page course with id like this yeah it's just dummy id and we cannot to pre-render this page with this dummy ID. Okay, so probably a possible fix, and it actually works. Yeah, <clears throat> we need to check before destructurization do we have courses or not. And if we just check before destructuring, yeah, if, if you remember, we have code like this. Yeah, we have destructurization directly. Uh, in the props yeah and it's not quite right yeah in case when we ha have uh, undefined property as uh, we have for this uh, unveiled uh, unknown id we have trouble with destructurization so uh, right now it works fine and i have one more small fix i just add this link before and after our content uh, section so right now uh, we have a page that looks like this just one sec So, right now you can see that our deployment uh, has completed. Let's check the details. Okay, and let's visit our page. Yeah. So, right now our status is ready. Yeah, and we have this content. So, then you can see that we have this link and roll now before and after this description area. Yeah, just to make uh, it's possible for the user enroll to the course. Let's think how our rotor should work. And I'm sure that we need to have query parameters because we're going to manipulate by queries. So, let's uh, import use rotor. 
And then for the use rotor, let's create rotor for our layout. Let's call this parameter Q, yeah, just for our query. And if we have no any Q, let's uh, create it probably by default. Or let's uh, leave it as is. Or we can make this this pattern, yeah, we just can assign by default this value empty string, yeah, and right now our queue is parameter string or array of strings. Let's create a part of state that gonna to handle this query. And we use uh, state, we have used state hook, let's uh, destructor parameters from the array that use state should return, we should use two variables query and set query so we have this search input let's uh, set up value by default as a query yeah we can use our query to apply some value to this input and we have on change handler let's create a function search change and we provide this function to the search input so this search change it receives uh, one prop event and we have type change event in the react that can help us to uh, set up a type for this argument should be change event html uh, for the html input element yeah we put to the generic type of the element that provides uh, that uh, initiate this event then we can take a uh, value for the current target yeah when we uh, initiate some changes in this input we have this value first of all let's set up uh, this value to our uh, state yeah we have use state right over here and we can use this set query to install new value that we receive from this input and then we push it back to the value field uh, right over here to this parameter query what should we do next let's just uh, um, you uh, just make redirect to the path search with query parameter uh, q and set up to this query parameter this value that we have yeah in case when this value length more or unequal than two we just push new state to the rotor to the location search with query parameter q equals value in case if we clear our um, value yeah, from this input, we just push a uh, new state to the router root uh, location. Yeah, it's uh, gonna to redirect our user back to the main page. Yeah, because I want to make search just for our courses. Yeah, and in case when user search something, you just type. Uh, some value to the search input and then we redirect him to the search page let's check how it works now when we tap something uh, after length of this search string more than two uh, elements we redirect user to the search and we have this query yeah but right now we have no this page search and when we redirect user to this page you can see that we clear this search input and it's not quite right we should install uh, data from a query parameter as well as from the user input and how can we fix it we have use effect hook as far as you remember let's check in case if we have q we just set up query uh, to this queue, yeah, to this parameter queue. And we have dependency on this parameter, yeah, so in case when we have changes in this search parameter, we just set new query parameter. Let's check how it looks now, yeah. So uh, let's just tap something, and then you can see we have clear again. Probably that's because of this non-existent page and we have this error. So let's move back to this uh, problem a little bit later. 
create quite simple search page. We just read uh, from the router parameter Q and then uh, render it uh, in a header of first level. Yeah, just quite simple action. Just read parameter and render it. Okay, so let's check how it looks now in the browser. Okay, uh, let's put something like JS. See the result now. Yeah, we have lots of JS or TypeScript, and we immediately just render it to the content uh, as a content of this page. Yeah. So, and when we go back to the main by our own, we have still this TypeScript in our input. Yeah, but we need to clear this data when we uh, have some redirection or in any other case when we clear our query parameters let's fix this trouble too and let's fix it like this if we have query right over here and if we have no any uh, parameter q in our uh, search parameters we just set up our query yeah, set query it's value of our search input to empty string yeah so it means in case when we clear our q we just uh, q parameter we just clear our input let's check how it looks in the browser now yeah let's put something like typescript and then let's go back to the main page yeah and you can see that we clear our search input when we go at any other location yeah when we change our location we clear this input okay it looks fine for me and we have one redundant link all that lead us to nowhere yeah we can clear this link in from main navigation menu to make just two items in the main navigation and it looks much more better now we have profile we can switch team we have this search uh, courses box link that lead us to the main page and we can tap something to the search in case when we change location we just clear data from the search okay looks fine so uh let's stop here and for the next lesson we create search for our courses see you in the next video how can we manage search on the backend side and we have this parameter contains e that check uh, that our uh, entity uh, or to be a more precise particular field contains some text and how can we use it and in uh, Strapi, we have API like this. We can <clears throat> import a query string and then stringify any bunch of parameters. It's uh, from documentation and we're going to do it by this way. Yeah, it's it could be very, very uh, complex filters like this. Yeah, bunch of filters that provides or. Yeah, and we just choose. Uh, based on this filter, uh, some information in range of the dates, uh, yeah, more uh, than an equal, yeah, and second and quality with this second date. Okay, then we can stringify these parameters and provide it just as query to our request. So, how can we handle it in our application? Let's create a function fetch courses. Then in this uh, function, we have API URL. Yeah, we just take this public Strapi API URL parameter. Then let's install library query string as save dependency. After installation, we import query string from query string. And then we have our query. First of all, we want to populate all of our fields, includes cover or any other stuff that we have for our entity. And then let's create filters uh, like or uh, for any match in headers, in subtitle or in description. If we have some match with our query, we just return our course to the user. Then let's import our type course as course type. And I want to create a new type course response that just responds with array of courses. So then I want to handle our request. Yeah, we just take result. Yeah, we provide this query uh, after courses. Yeah, and then we receive this result as courses response and we return this result that we're going to handle by our code. 
Let's import use state and use effect from React. That's uh, gonna change our state for the component. So then let's create our state, yeah? And we have courses. They're just uh, array of courses or undefined in case when we have nothing or in case when we have error. And we have error and set error, yeah? It could be string or undefined. So that's the state that we need to have for our component. And then let's create a use effect, yeah? Based on our query, yeah, because we have dependency query, we have this fetch data function because we cannot to create a sync function for the use effect. In case when we need to have a sync, we need to create a sync function and then just call it. Okay, we have this fetch data function that fetch, uh, call fetch response and uh, provide uh, right over here our query, yeah, our Q parameter and return data or error. In case if we have error, we just set error. In case when we have courses, we set data to the courses. Yeah, it's quite simple. Yeah, we have a lots of um, examples in our code. Yeah, how can we handle by uh, request. In this case, we just set up courses or error to our state. Okay, how should we manage this data? And let's create function, uh, let's create component header. Yeah, that's styled component header of sort level. Of course, we need to import styled. Yeah, and we have this header that uh, can wrap our query, but it can be query, data, or error. And it depends on three parameters query courses and error let's create a function that gonna to render content for this header okay here we go we have function header render we have three parameters in this function query type a string uh, courses that non required parameter and it's uh, course type error and we have error is just string because we set up uh, just message to this set error function so in case when we have error we return just error string in case when we have uh, courses and length uh, of this array it's uh, more than zero we uh, return such results for our query if we have no any content we return none result for query but it's just for header what should we do for the content and i want to remind you that we have a index page and we have this course wrapper that wrap bunch of courses and i believe that we shouldn't change anything in the render behavior yeah Let's just split this code. I don't want to have this course wrapper in the index page. Let's create it in our course. Let's just copy this uh, course wrapper and then move it to the components course and right over here for the course. Let's export this component and then we need to export this component uh, from the index file. Yeah, course and courses wrapper. Or let's call it just wrapper, yeah, because it's just quite simple wrapper that we have for the courses. Okay, let's export this wrapper and then let's import it instead of this component. Let's import it right over here. Then we don't need this style and we can use this wrapper right over here. So quite simple refactoring. And I believe that we have absolutely the same rendering for the index and for the search, yeah? We can uh, just take this component uh, part, yeah, of the rendering of this component uh, with this wrapper and make it as a uh, new component, yeah, that receive these courses and then wrap uh, this bunch of courses to the wrapper and return this rendering for the user. So let's import this course type and then let's create component courses yeah that receive courses and strapi euro uh, so then we just uh, wrap everything and then render a bunch of courses and we can export this component too so let's add this export 
right over here course wrapper and courses and then let's uh import this uh we don't need this course and wrapper we have only courses so and we need to uh, add this component courses and drop everything below yeah so we have this uh, courses and we have this strapi URL. Yeah, it could be string or undefined. Let's make it as string. Yeah. Right. Right now we have string type and bunch of courses. Let's check that it works fine. Okay, miracle! It still works. Yeah, without any problems. We have uh, courses and we have particular course that we can open. Okay, so everything works fine. Let's now import this courses component and then we have absolutely the same uh, rendering behavior. Yeah, we need to add probably fragment, then push courses and we need to uh, cut this headers and put it inside our fragment. So we have some troubles with types. First of all, we need to add this parameter strap, strapy URL and then we have this courses but it can be undefined yeah let's make conditional rendering if we have courses we gonna render courses yeah in case when we have no we just render nothing yeah so uh, looks like we've done our search let's check it in the browser okay here we go right now let's put something like this yeah when we have no any results okay so when we have no any results we can see it let's push js or typescript or basic or expert and we have just only one result for the expert or types uh, or whatever bullshit okay so it works fine yeah our rendering works fine and when we drop all of the data we go to the main page yeah as you can see when we put something we on the search page when we clear this input we on the main page when we add some content yeah script uh, script okay uh, uh, we on the search page yeah Okay, looks like it works fine, but I want to show you one more thing, yeah? When I uh, reload this page, yeah, we have uh, no any server side rendering. As you can see, we have no results for undefined, yeah? So, it's not quite right, yeah? We need to create a server-side rendering in this case, because we cannot to pre-render any possible uh, scenario for the search, because user can type anything, yeah? And we need to pre-build on the backend side uh, every, per every request specific response. And for this purposes, we're gonna to make server-side rendering. So, see you in the next video. Okay, get server side props. If you export a function, get server side props, this page uh, gonna to pre render uh, and on each request and return data. Yeah, so you can use this function to create props that you cannot to predict. Yeah, it, it, it can be ahead of user request. For every user request, it can be different bunch of data that user want to see. And in this case, you need to use get server side props. For any other uh, scenarios, you have get static props and get static paths. Because when you can generate statically a bunch of pages that user can cache using CDN and browser, you need to use get static paths or get static props. Okay, so let's make an example with get server side props. We have special type get server side props in next. So we can use this function get server side props, mark it as get server side props. Then we have context. And in the context, we have query. And we can take this parameter q as string 
or null. In case when we have no any queue, we return just a bunch of empty, uh, yeah, just empty array for the courses because we have no any data. Then let's call fetch courses. Just push Q to this function uh, fetch courses and we have data and error. In case when we have error, we can return empty array of courses or let's return error message in this case. Yeah, just uh, undefined uh, for the courses and error message. Yeah, just string. And if everything works fine, we return uh, data yeah, and map it to the prop courses. So then we need to add uh, these props to the search, yeah, because what get set aside props do? It builds uh, props and then when we call our search page, it provides a bunch of props to the search page. And we have courses as course type array and error as string. Then we need to use destructurization, yeah? And let's map courses to SSR courses prop and error to the SSR error. How can we use this data? And we can set up to the use state as default values SSR courses and SSR error. And that is it, yeah? We have this data that we built on the server then we push this data to the search page and set up it to the use state as default values so it's it's everything that we need let's check how it works uh, in the browser and let's like then example search something yeah and right now i have this query yeah and as you can see i just download this page and let's check uh, source code of this page. And you can see that right now it's real server side rendering because I can see that it's my header and hands on React.js, yeah. And I should have some uh, words about description, uh, yeah, like this TypeScript basic, yeah. And you can see props that Next.js just pre built and push it. Uh, to the uh, script section, yeah, that gonna to install to these components. So it works fine, yeah, we have real server-side rendering uh, for the search. We have statical uh, page generation, we have static page generation for our courses uh, and per every page under this course. And we have server-side rendering for the um, uh, JavaScript, yeah, for the um, for the search, yeah, and when I go to the search, we have server side rendering. Okay, it looks very cool, yeah. We have server side rendering and all of the data features in the Next.js framework. So it was very cool. See you on the next video. Okay, and we have troubles with build. Let's check what happens on the UI test. And we can see that we have components error, cannot read property query of now, yeah? And uh, probably I know what is the real problem. It's because we need to uh, add something specific. We don't have any rotor, next rotor in our storybook. And we have special add-on, uh, storybook add-on next rotor. Let's install it. Let's install it as dev dependency. Then we need to add to the add-on section storybook add-on next rotor. And in the preview, we need to import rotor context. And we need to add to the parameter section um, our provider uh, as rotor context provider. Let's check in the local environment that it works now. Okay, and for the layout, it works fine. Yeah, we have layout that works without any problems now. Okay, it's much more better. Okay, and when I ran test cases, we have three failed test cases. And because of this rotor again, let's run tests now. NPM tests for the test cases. And... Let's see the result of this run, and we have a lots of trouble. Yeah, nine test cases has failed. What's really happened?
and it's, it's a lot of troubles yeah and everything because of this Q parameter yeah when we trying to destruct ring Q from router query and it means that we need to add more mocks yeah for this test cases and I see one place it's layout yeah of course because in the layout we have this uh, query yeah and we need to add this query okay as you can see i just mock use rotor yeah and mix up it with next uh, rotor require actual and we use just function mock return value yeah when we return query and push as mock function yeah and then i found one more place it's uh pages yeah and for the pages we need to add query and push yeah because we sometimes have some push events for the router like example we have a push right over here yeah and i just uh mock return value and put query as empty uh, object and push as just function yeah so and by the same way i just add to the registration and for the user this query parameter because we have layout that wrap everything i want to remind you in the test utils we have page render and we wrap everything by the layout yeah so let's right now run test cases okay and we have four failed snapshots so let's just update snapshots okay now everything looks cool yeah we have uh green lights green lights good okay and let's wait in until our build uh will be done so oh, and we have one change that we need to accept yeah let's check how it looks in the chromatic and we have changes in the layout yeah and for the layout we just drop this link all yeah okay looks cool let's accept this change and probably we don't have any other troubles yeah build looks cool and you can see that right now we can merge our pull request let's merge our pull request just to create production build because when we merge to the master we're gonna to initiate a production build so and we can see that right now we have two environments preview and production let's check our production environment and you can see that one minute minute ago we deployed our production let's view deployment okay so it's production build yeah it works fine yeah i don't see any trouble i can open courses without any troubles okay so main page we can uh, use houseflow yeah let's just create account test at test dot test uh okay it's kind of email let's test create test user with this email and generate some password okay sign up uh let's update this information okay have small trouble with registration but let's check like example search yeah test and you can see that right now we have this search that works fine or javascript yeah or something that shouldn't find anything and yeah, I have trouble with mixed content because I have HTTPS uh, for the <laughs> my uh, domain for the production and I have HTTP for the backend. Yeah, it can be uh, fixed, but let's just skip this details. Let's check preview and it's it should be absolutely the same, but everything should works fine. Yeah, let's just find something. Okay. And you can see that no results for this query yeah let's find javascript okay it's probably not so fast so for the deployment i have https 2 yeah and in this case it won't work yeah because we have trouble with uh, this mixed content stuff Okay, it's a little bit sad, but I can fix it by simple way right now during this coding session, yeah? Okay, but we still have our local environment, yeah? And local environment works fine, yeah? We have search, 
uh, JavaScript or some, yeah, we have uh, login, yeah, we have flow of registration, we have server side rendering for the search, like example, let's put some Java or uh, React JS, yeah, and then let's uh, request this data and we have real search results with server side rendering yeah you can see this header and it's absolutely the same as we render on the client side okay it's very big job that we uh that we've done yeah so it was a very interesting explanation uh, for me. Yeah, probably it's good experience for you. You can leave any re review and you can uh, press start button on the GitHub page or press fork button. Yeah, it's very, very helpful for me. And also leave any review for this course. So see you in the next video, probably for the next course or whatever. So see you.